All right, let's get this started. I don't have a whole lot of time today, guys. Uh, I'm running behind. Anyway, uh, some people sent this to me and said it was interesting. It's Jinxie talking on a Sneeko. I kind of like this guy. I kind of like him. Queso and Sketch seem to be, and maybe I'm just out of the loop, but some like up and coming streamers. Um, I mostly just like see clips of them on TikTok. I'm not a big stream watcher, you know, but that is a very important industry to get into, obviously, is those shorts and the you know, brand awareness, we'll say. Um, so yeah, I'm curious about this more than anything else from Jinxie. You know, it's interesting because not to bring it up, but you know, you have some legacy streamers like Hassan and Asmagold talking about the difficulties in streaming and how you basically have to stream eight or nine hours a day. But my understanding, Queso and Jinxie, they stream four to five hours a day, which I think is optimal three to five hours a day and spend most of your time getting yourself out there through like clips and different things. Um, and kind of like enjoying your success. You know, people, I don't think not, nowadays want to sit through a nine hour stream. It's cool if you have a, th it's better to have a three hour consistent entertaining stream than a nine hour stream where half the time you're just kind of futzing around. So, Schmingle Bop Super Chat. Okay, I'll read that in a second. Give me a minute. So, yeah, let's see what this is. Uh, we got Sneeko. I'm not a big fan of him, but hey, what are you going to do? Uh, also, thank you so much for the $2 from Schmingle Bob. Bop. Mr. Gut, what would your OF name be? I don't know. I don't even know how to answer that question. Right in the beginning of the segment. Are you serious? Are you serious? All right, let's get this going. Now, if you saw this title of this YouTube video, you probably dropped a dookie in the back of your pants. But today, I'm turn myself down. Sneeko, one of the most controversial men on the internet. Oh. He's been banned on. I'll say men lightly. YouTube banned on Twitch, probably banned on TikTok as well. Shit, he might even be banned on DoorDash. Well, we're sitting him down and we're interviewing. Yeah, and like just to be clear, it's not because of what he's saying; it's how he's saying it. Like again, like Ben, your the Ben Shapiro's of the world and the Daily Wire individuals—they are on YouTube, they are on TikTok, and they're not having a problem because they know how to express their opinion um, without trying to be provocative for attention. Because that's really what it boils down to: it's trying to be provocative for attention rather than um, you know this. What he's saying isn't necessarily full of substance; it's just about like trying to bait attention. Whereas you have these other conservative individuals who are saying the same message and they're able to pull people onto their website like Daily Wire and people engage with it. So, you know, yeah. Uh, thank you so much for $2 from Maisie Miller. Glad I am here, though. I am at work. Love listening. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Doing him today, we want to know why and we want to extract the facts the and facts. apart from the fiction. Okay. Let's get it. Let's get I'm sure you're equipped for this. Let's see what we got. If you want to keep these lights on, look, okay. I got to pay rent. All you got to do is click the like button and subscribe. Incredible. Enjoy the podcast. Okay. All right, let's get it cranking, man. Let's do it. Um, you're like probably the third guest. We had two pretty wholesome guests, I'd say. And I don't know, you know if Yeah, somebody said case well, Queso was one of them. I might I, I thought about looking at it if I, we have some downtime and other there's not a lot of other stuff to look at it another day. If you fall in that, what do you think? I'm a wholesome guy. Okay. I'm um, a wholesome guy. I don't know if that's true, but okay. okay. Maybe he's doing another rebrand. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe Sneeko's found a new daddy to attach himself to and, and absorb the personality of. So, like, wait, did you do research and now you think I'm not wholesome? No, 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 we did. Well, no, of course you're not wholesome in any capacity. It's like, I'm not wholesome either. I'm not nearly as provocative as you, but, like, wholesome is a whole different level. We did research. I don't – I mean, we'll, we'll, we'll figure it out today, I guess. But um, so first thing is, why do you think you're banned off of YouTube? Well, we already know why he's banned because, like, he is too provocative. Like, he got banned explicitly because he was being very, like, he said he basically sexually harassed, like, uh, that girl, Chad Chad. He was being, like, he, that's the problem. It's not, like, what he's saying. It's how he's saying it. There are plenty of other people saying the same thing that he's saying better and more intelligently, frankly. But he is provocative for attention. That's a big part of who he is and who his brand is because nothing he really says is that mind-blowing and he doesn't really have a particularly strong concept of what he's saying either he just kind of copies people around him i mean he's just andrew tate light so thank you so much for the eight month small gut from schminglebop <laughs> been wanting to ask deaf papa nut or papa okay <laughs> okay i'll pick one i broke the community guidelines about hope misinformation and a lot of misinformation yeah that's not what happened we already know that that's not those things we already know because like we, we saw ABBA talking about it and people were like, yo, calm it down with like being so provocative and they eventually banned him. What actually got his account banned is after he got a, a suspension on his account, he posted on his secondary account, which is considered ban evasion, and he got pulled down. That was the final straw more than anything else. And they got rid of him. 
So it's not like this magical COVID misinformation. He doesn't know what he's talking about when it comes to COVID, but that's not what it is. Thank you so much, Jack Esposito, uh, Esposito for the $5. Hey, yo, Papa, this is my seventh time casting stream. I'm going to pick up some fried chicken for me and Grandma. Very cool, man. I'm <laughs> the third one was cyberbullying harassment. So I, I broke three strikes. And then they banned me off of like most of social media after that. I'm also banned on, on TikTok and Twitch. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Do you regret anything or do you think you did it all? Like I don't, no, I don't regret anything, no. I don't, I don't live with regrets. Uh, based. Okay. <laughs> So like, a sign of somebody who will never change. I don't live with any regrets. Like, now, when you're talking about, I mean, I, we're probably going to have to like bleep or cut this because it'll get demonetized. But when you're talking about like COVID misinformation or election misinformation, what were you saying? He was just saying that it wasn't real and it was used to control people's minds, even though that's objectively false. COVID is real. I've had people pass away to it. I worked during COVID. I was a, considered like a necessary worker during COVID. I managed a cleaning crew for the uh, county transportation system through COVID. It was brutal. I watched people like pass away, family members. It, su it sucks, man. It's a real thing. I got COVID twice. It's not like the hottest take. Do I think that the, I think that the only real issue in the way that we talked about it was that the government should have been um, more honest and saying like, Hey, this is COVID is like, this strain is very new based on all the information we have. This is the best way to operate, you know, with the vaccine, which was a positive. But like we're going to come up with new information every day as we're continuing to study this. And I think that that could have been a lot better for people um, in general. I think they could have made them feel better about what was happening around them. You know? Well, I'm, I'm against a vaccine. Um, yeah, this, this is going to be brutal. You don't want to like say these words on, uh, on YouTube. Oh, yeah, we'll probably just have to cut it. But uh, it's interesting to hear about it. Yeah, um, I'll just be honest. Yeah, I'm against, I'm against the vaccine. I spoke up about the vaccine when it was really bad you weren't supposed to talk about that and now people are finding out that there's like heart issues and there's problems with that so you don't want to what what are you talking about <laughs> like first of all like all vaccines potentially have some kind of a potential side effect but the positives massively outweigh the negatives what are you what heart thing are you talking about what yeah, I'm, did you take it no i didn't take yeah it. see florida people don't take it yeah I yeah i had to take it because my wife had to take it so we took it together she had to take it for a job well, guess what we're fine i feel like when you look at most states florida is definitely and like heart issues are certainly linked to actually having covid so um, I'm just gonna look it up, but like that's one of the things too. Uh, vaccines have this is what I'm reading off of like the literal American Heart Association site. Vaccines have side effects. The COVID-19 vaccines, for example, has been linked to rare rare cases of myocarditis and uh, pericarditis types of heart inflammation. This has uh, this has to be viewed in context, said Dr. Gregory uh, Piazza, Pizza, director of vascular medicine. Yeah, so basically, yeah, there are some negative side effects, but. Getting actual COVID is exponentially worse when it comes to issues with your heart than the very rare cases of the COVID vaccine. And this is a problem. Is that like they're going to hyper fixate on the or sneaker will hyper fixate on this. Like, like, yeah, there might be some inflammation in very rare cases. Okay. In COVID, it fucks you. Like I, um, I was, it was a horrific thing. I had COVID. It was horrible. Like my, like that's how my uncle passed away. He got it. And then he just kind of slumped over. I think his heart just stopped. He just slumped over and it was it. Like the vaccine is better than getting COVID. I, I, it's not, this isn't even like questionable. If you disagree with me, then like, that's fine, but you're wrong and you're kind of stupid. Like, I don't know what to tell you. Look into it. Nothing that exists doesn't have some kind of a negative. We don't go, we won't, we don't, won't say if there's a negative, it's bad. We say, what is the positive versus the negative? That's every conversation we've ever had ever. Right. But Sneeko has like a narrative to push that there, and the narrative is anything that's anti woke, right? Anything that is anti establishment, even though he supports the rat race, anything that is like anti establishment. So if somebody, if, a, if somebody in government, specifically a left leaning person says that something is good, he says it's bad. He's just a sheep in the opposite direction, opposite direction. He's not woke. He's just dumb in the, in the opposite way. More loose state. Like people don't do. I mean, I don't know. I didn't take the vaccine. I can tell you didn't take it just by this neighborhood. And I wouldn't have taken the vaccine if I didn't have to, because I was able to isolate myself uh, at a certain point. You know, like I was able to work through it because um, I was I, like, by the time I like took the vaccine, I was working from home. You know, like I understand people being skeptical of it. I get it. My wife and I were too, but she had to get it for her job. So I got it and nothing bad happened. Like everything's fine. Yeah, like exactly. the, the trees in here and the, there's a swamp. Like everyone has their own world out here. It's just, you know, yeah. Why yeah. would you go inject that into your body? But you weren't supposed to speak about that. And I just wanted to okay. warn my viewers. I'd, you could speak about it and you just couldn't be a, a dick about it. And I, you know, I, I want to speak out against something that's <laughs> going to be harmful, especially okay. when, you know, all the information is steering one way. Okay. I mean, but do you think <laughs> when all the information is steering one way, you mean like against you factually against you? Okay. And now like, I'm not saying you're right or wrong, but do you think you're in a place of like being able to say like 
Do you feel like you've done enough research to where you can no, honestly give opinions on that? He's well, I mean, at the same time, what like, they, do they say that about the celebrities that are getting paid money to promote it? Like, have, like Michael Phelps, for example, he's getting paid by Pfizer to promote it. Okay, so the, okay, the question is, is do you feel like you have the ability to talk about this based on your like history? Uh, yeah, Michael Phelps doesn't either, but Michael Phelps is supporting the objective data that we have on the topic. You're just saying no, that's wrong with no facts or information behind it. So no, you're not qualified. Was he uh, was he in the labs verifying the ingredients, or did they just give him money? No, but I think it's the same principle in school of thought. Like if I feel like only like people that are like <coughs> doctors or like professionals should like talk about it. That's like I don't I don't talk about yeah probably shit I don't know about because I fucking know about it. You know. And like if you're going to talk about it, talk about it from the person like based on the data that is available to us. Saying yeah, but at the same time they had it, the whole like all of America and everybody in the West saying stop the spread stay indoors it's like so everybody became a medical expert but then if you just like nobody him people were listening to medical experts <laughs> look at basic statistics okay. and people weren't dying from it was if you look at basic basic statistics a million people died because of covid in america in like the first three years the excess death rate was a million like just to be clear like we have very robust statistics in western countries where we can track how many people will generally die every year and we can make a projection like three hundred thousand people died over the general projected amount every year for like the first three years because of COVID. What other what other factor is it? Oh, they were inside so they had mental health problems. That might be part of it, but the overwhelming majority of it is COVID. I worked in COVID. It's so annoying when you have these terminally online like rich kids sitting here talking, specifically Sneeko, I like to jinx you, but talking about this topic, like you know what you're talking about. You have no real world experience with what was going on and you don't actually look at the science or the facts. So what are you talking about? It was basically the same mortality rate as the flu. No, it wasn't. <laughs> so why would I inject a vaccine? <laughs> no, it wasn't. And people get flu vaccines too. So what the fuck are you talking about? RNAs in there. You can look that up. It's like gene therapy. It modifies your DNA. I'm not going to take that for something that has the same okay. mortality rate as the flu. I don't think my viewers should either. Uh, so the mortality rate of COVID has gone down because as time went on, it's evolved in a way where it's more viral, but it's less um, dangerous. So it is close to a flu now. That's how everything has always started. People used to die from the common cold, and now it's called the common cold. That's how everything happens. Something comes up, we figure out a way to handle it, and then we take a vaccine, and it shifts, and it becomes less of a problem, and time goes on. <laughs> well, okay. People definitely were dying from COVID, though. Yes. Not as much as they, they made it seem. I know. Mm, yes, they were. But you just said people weren't dying from COVID. Or at the same rate as, as the flu. Did you? No, that's not true. Get COVID? Did you ever have COVID? Yeah, I got it multiple times. Yeah, I had COVID. I was, like, hospitalized. It was, like, at the peak of COVID. Um, and I, wow, he got hospitalized? I remember, like, that was a scary fucking scene. Like, a lot. Yeah, man. I remember, like, barely being able to breathe. And then I fucked my wife. And then I couldn't breathe. And I felt like I was going to die. <laughs> a lot of people in there had COVID. Um, and that was, like, peak. So, like, people definitely died from it. It was definitely horrible. Um. But, you know, if you yeah. don't get the vaccine, I'm not, I'm not, not, I didn't get the vaccine, like, because I just didn't want to, I don't like putting anything in my body. You know sure. I mean, yeah. I mean, that's fine. Like, it's fine if you're skeptical about vaccines, but don't pretend that, like, it's not effective. You know what I mean? Just be real. But, um, especially when you can't really make a vaccine in a year. Yes, you can. <laughs> what, what, based on what? Because you said so? It's, okay, I don't even know why I'm getting fucking triggered by this. That doesn't make sense. Well, yeah. I mean, yeah, you're right. It doesn't make sense that scientists can get things done. They kind of had to we went to the fucking moon and you have something in your pocket, a phone that has the ability to uh, use a GPS on it, call anybody, text anybody, show your face to anybody in the entire world, you know, put out any information you want ever, play like any old video game ever, do essentially everything on there. There's AI technology that can basically mimic a human being on there, but we couldn't create a vaccine in a year that that pushes too far that's probably right what are you talking about <laughs> rush obviously but yeah i mean i just don't i just don't want to put anything in my body like besides, yeah, that's like, fine shit i eat you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. like i don't i don't know i don't know what's in that but um that's fair like said, the other thing was election misinformation right bro you're fucking crazy what did you say? <laughs> uh january they, that was all staged and a lot of that footage came out <laughs> Whatever, man. Listen, here's the thing. If Sneeko ever was able to get himself out of this conspiratorial fucking brain rot, he would be a better person. So I think it's funny that he's not. January 6th wasn't staged. Nothing even close to suggests that. Uh, people, you know, stormed the Capitol because Donald Trump was riling people up saying this is the time to fight. And I, this election was stolen from me, even though the, only, the, the, the judges he elected, conservative judges, disagreed with him in every single instance. He didn't get a single W on any widespread uh, impactful voter fraud. He took an L and he cried about it. And he's a fucking pussy. Oh, when they was, raided the um, they, see, that was a lot of that was a fed psyop. No, it wasn't. A lot of that was like this is. Oh man, okay. I feel bad for your for your kid viewers that are watching this. Like, what is this guy talking about? No, I'm so wholesome, guys. Here's some things that aren't true by every objective standard. Our, our podcast, our average age is like what twenty? Twenty one. Twenty one. It's oh, well, I mean, when it comes to this, people who are under eighteen are probably listening. To their account as over eighteen, so you never know. But okay, people know seventy something percent is like eighteen to twenty two, so you can go for it. Oh, okay, that's good. Well, 
a lot of the footage was shown afterwards. They made it seem like there were these like really terrible people. A lot of the people that were there on January were just there to support Trump. And well, a lot of people that were there did not actually storm the Capitol. That's true. Some of them were just peacefully protesting, but then there were plenty that weren't. Okay. And then the people that were encouraging and started breaking the glass, that were that was actually paid. Like those are no, it wasn't <laughs> federal agents. Okay. A lot of these people, Great. and especially that guy with the horns and everything, that guy was uh, was encouraged to do that by former federal agents. That. Was Okay, no, he, he just wasn't. There's nothing su even suggesting that. It was one giant psyop to make Trump seem like a bad person. So sneak up. <laughs> okay. How do you know this? Because the footage was released two years later. A lot of that footage was not released at the time because if you actually asked the people that were there, no. they'd be like, yeah, it was fine. You know, we were just there to support Trump and everything like that. We think the election was rigged. And then on the news, they made it seem like these no. people, these rancid people. Which didn't happen. Were like barging in through the White House. But people, people there weren't. The problem is, is that you have a bunch of people that are bored all day sitting on Facebook thinking that everything on there is a fact and they're getting radicalized in both directions. I have a family member for each side of that that like sits there and they're bored all day. So they look at Facebook and they go fucking insane. And they think that like Trump is a literal fucking neo-Nazi demon. And then they think Biden is like a fucking lizard pedophile. Like that's, that is what's happening. Like that's, people are just getting radicalized and going insane. Thank you so much for the $5. What is that? Senko Jr.? Hey, Wings, first time enjoying the stream, I'm gooning with some Leviathans in your stream on my birthday. Wait, shouldn't you give me money? Love you. <laughs> I should. Uh, I guess I should. I'm supposed to listen to that because I was all censored. You were, see, like, you were completely deleted like me if you spoke up about that. But okay. Okay. that footage we're seeing now that that's actually proven true. Like, why? It wasn't proven anything, but okay. How do you think you, there were never cameras of the Capitol building and of, uh, of what was happening there? Because they didn't want you to see what was really happening. There was footage from the beginning. What are you talking about? They, they showed you a specific version of the events so that they could tell you what happened instead of tell you the truth. So wow. you think, okay, just to like backtrack the last okay. five minutes. Um, so you think the January government psyop? Yes. I like how they're censoring everything. And you're positive, like 100. percent Well, there's yeah, I was proven right. right. <laughs> even though there's literally nothing that even that that suggests that. Yeah, he feels right. Of course, he's going to. Anyway, okay. Sanko, Sanko. Oh, did you get your mic in yet or no? no okay. My backpack is like pretty bare. Yes, it was a government psyop, but everything is a government psyop. I... <laughs> yeah, what? My fact check is fair. Yeah, it was a government psyop, but everything's a government. Your your fact check doesn't exist. This guy's a fucking idiot too. Holy shit. <laughs> What are you talking about? I think that what actually happened is the Proud Boys were there and the FBI might have had some people infiltrating the Proud Boys to figure out what was going on. That's not the same thing as a PSYOP where the government tries to get you to like do a particular thing. Like there's a difference between saying like, oh, the FBI had uh, was watching these particular groups like the Proud Boys which is at least to some extent uh, close to, if not a terrorist organization, like a bunch of fucking, you know, insane fucking far right wing racists. Um, like, yeah, the, the FBI had like most likely was watching them, but that doesn't mean that they wanted them or caused them to do January 6th. This is objectively not true. It's just not true. It was the FBI that was inciting the riot. The FBI no, was wasn't. the one. They were breaking the glass first. Yeah, no, it wasn't. He is totally wrong. Your fact checker's a fucking idiot. Is he your brother? Uh, no, that's my cousin. He just your cousin's dumb. Sorry. Oh, okay. He's like uh he runs the podcast and shit. Well, okay. He's well, the shitty Jamie. Shitty Jamie. I got the okay. backup from him, and then, yeah. uh, he's also unvaccinated too. I can tell. I can hear your voice. Um, I, I don't really think. Let's go. Most people, I'd say ninety percent of this neighborhood is unvaccinated. Probably. That's, that's why Florida's great. Well, probably because you guys are fucking rich. Uh, thank you so much for the two dollars from Patrick Logue. Thank you for watching the video. I said it. Yeah, no problem. I mean, listen, these guys are obviously like probably well to do. Jinx, Jinxy probably has like parents that do well and family that does well, which gives them the ability to even become a streamer in the first place. Doesn't take away from how like um, uh, entertaining he is, but that's probably why none of them is vaccinated in that community. It's a great place. Uh, thank you so much for the two dollars from Shorts White. Do you even believe Sneeko? Do you think that Sneeko actually believes what he's saying? I don't even. I don't know that Sneeko knows what he believes. He's just saying things to keep himself popular. That's why when he made a joke about Muslims, he instantly uh, uh, backtracked it because he's completely enthralled by audience capture. But any other joke, he he doubles down on it because people uh, in his sphere respond to it. Like I don't. He's he's not. He doesn't have agency or autonomy over himself. He's just a he's a slave to his audience. Like that's the only reason why. That's why you see Sneeko get more and more radical. As his because his audience is getting more and more radical, and he's just following what he, his audience wants. Like he doesn't really know what he's saying. He's like a babbling child. Yeah, um, this is a great state, beautiful place. <laughs> That's why I moved here. I can. You're from yeah, Florida, aren't you? Wait, wait, where are you from? I'm from New York and Connecticut. Like I was born oh, in New York. New York yeah. yeah, yeah. And you get sturdy sometimes too. I begin sturdy, man. Yeah, I live in New York, and I'm going to stay here because the education is objectively better than fucking Florida's dog shit education. Okay, <laughs> I got to so, teach you, man. You got to get sturdy. Yeah. So, do you think this is my next question? And this is something I've. I, I could have asked you over. I'm not going to ask you over Twitter. I need to ask you like in person. Okay. Do you think Andrew Tate made you? Yes. For no, I've been doing. He made, he made you his fucking bitch. YouTube for a long time, man. I had a million subscribers um, back in 2021, <laughs> and I think I started live streaming in 2022. I was uh, I was. Yeah, that's when you pretty much started to fall off, which started fucking gulping his cock. Pretty big on YouTube beforehand. I was known for a lot of different of my series for for quite a while. Okay, interesting. Um, so do you? That's think the first time anyone's asked me that. That's well, yeah. okay. Like I don't think people think that. I'm pretty plugged into the internet.
you admit that you've made the most money you ever did when associating yourself with Red Pill and, and, and Andrew Tate. So. And like, I remember when Andrew Tate was blowing up, you were blowing up like a one month after, and it was the same style of content, right? Like, you're sad, do push ups, right? Yeah, it was yeah. that same style of content. <laughs> so, yeah, but it was live streaming, so I live stream every day. That's what differentiated it is like, Andrew Tate would go on a Rumble stream once every three months. You were streaming every night. Um, so, do you think, and I want you to be honest, do you think you modeled your content after him when you saw the success? Yeah, of course he did. He originally started criticizing Andrew Tate for being too materialistic, and then he like instantaneously started gulping him down. That you got back when you were blowing up, you were like, you know, one of the fastest on YouTube channels, all that. Do you think, do you think even at one point you may have sacrificed your own beliefs just to fall under Andrew Tate's like wings? No, he's not going to say that, but yes, absolutely. Not at all. I think a lot of people were starting to wake up after that time in 2022, and that's when I started to talk about these okay. things. But what I got banned on YouTube for is not stuff that you're, that's known for being Andrew Tate stuff. Like, you're sad, do push up. I was talking about like the scene. I mean, you, you, the sexual harassment of that chat chat person is absolutely something andrew tate's known for considering he's a sex trafficking rapist i'm sorry just based on just to be clear just based on everything that he said that has been leaked out and the way that he talks to these women you can go look it up if you don't want to i don't really care that's why even like uh, aiden ross like accidentally slipped up and said andrew tate's about to try to escape romania <laughs> because he's gonna get fucked and he knows it okay talking about the election like that stuff is just when in 2022 after covid people started to really realize like look how much they were lying to us in the past couple of years they made us stay inside and lose your job and we got kicked out of school for something that wasn't that bad that wasn't necessary it was pretty bad they silenced all these people that 300 000 people a year is quite a few in america alone we're trying to speak up about something that was going to make you unhealthy i think people were starting to realize about all the lies and then after two years i will say that like the covid restrictions were like intense i'm not going to lie i'm not going to lie and say that like the covid misinformation policies on youtube weren't like extreme um and that probably made people feel a little more empowered to be a conspiracy like fucking brain because I had a video taken down for you know COVID misinformation, right? I get it, but that doesn't mean that it's all fake. You know, you can't really just go based on your feelings. You need to look at the actual facts of the situation. Years of being stuck inside, and that was happening to me. I was like, "What the hell is going on?" I was started to ask questions. Yeah, I saw like, a lot of his videos, and it, I was starting to wake up like while that stuff was was really blowing up. But not to say I, I modeled it after that. I, no. Yeah, obviously you did. This is just you're just dumb. So. But yeah, respect the two guys, man. I introduced another guys. Yeah, I mean, you, you, know, you met them, right? Except for them sex trafficking and raping women, of course. Yeah, they're cool. What were they like, like, <coughs> off, the, like off stream and stuff? The same as they are on camera. Yeah, I, I figured. But everything, every content creator, everybody's exaggerated. Like you, like when I, yeah. I watch streams all the time, like you're, like, you're yelling, you're drooling, and but you're not doing that right now. You know? Like, Have you yeah. watched my like gaming streams? Yeah, I don't even play Rainbow Six and I still watch it, bro. You're, you're entertaining. <laughs> yeah, I don't even know how the game works and I still watch the streams. That's insane. Wait, so like, when was the first time you saw one of my streams? Well, the first time? I don't like, know. A couple months ago? I think after I finished stream, I like, I look at the websites and I check up on everyone and see what's doing well. And I kept seeing your name pop up like on the sidebar of Twitch and I would tune in. Uh, I don't I don't have TikTok and I know that you, you blew up a lot on TikTok, so I never saw those stuff, but I would just I just It's funny that he's continuously glazing Tate considering Tate basically disavowed him recently, unless they kissed and made up again. Because he pretty much just called him like an immature child. I click on and like see what you're doing. You don't you know? have TikTok? I don't. You deleted it? I never had it. I mean, that's probably I think that's probably the best decision ever is to I mean like I, I mean not having Twitter is better than not having TikTok. Not like Twitter is insane like brain rot. TikTok is just like goofy, silly goosery, at least for the way I interact with it. It's just like dumb memes. But Twitch, uh, Twitter is fucking insane. Post on TikTok, but I do think that happens in Vortex, bro. Like if you, like when you're scrolling through TikTok, when you're scrolling through TikTok, you'll wake up and it's like, where did the last 45 minutes of my life go? It's, it's bad. I don't want to get into that bubble, but that bubble is kind of Twitter for me. So I could, I could delete that one too. Yeah. Twi I think Twitter out of all the social media platforms is probably the weirdest because I think Twitter, the best. everyone just like farms. It's the worst. Farms. Would you agree with that? Well, everyone like farms on every website. No, like, dude, TikTok, a lot of people on TikTok are just viewers. On Twitter, like, everyone has their own two cents. Like, you think that there's not a lot of lurkers on Twitter? There, no, there, I mean, there's lurkers on every social media platform, but. Well, there's probably more, there's more people posting on Twitter because it's more anonymous. Like, if you post on uh, TikTok, you know, you usually have to show your face. If you look at lurking on TikTok as opposed to lurking on Twitter, it's way, way more on TikTok. Because mm. TikTok's more of an entertaining, like, swipe, swipe, swipe. Twitter's like, this guy's yapping. Mm. I'm going to yap under it. Let's see how many likes I can get. It's That's just one big yap yeah. engagement farm. Yeah. Um, you yeah, know, it's, <clears throat> yeah, it's fun. But, um, what do you think it got worse over Elon? Did, is that what you. Twitter got worse over Elon? Yeah, I haven't yeah. really noticed a difference in Twitter. I mean, I've seen different people say that Twitter got worse under Elon and it's got more insane because of him. You know, I don't really know if that's true. I've seen people like Mark Cuban talk about it, but, you know, who knows? I just know it's a fucking cesspool now. Ever since Elon, to be honest, I, I don't know why everyone's so fixated on that. The only thing I noticed, which is corny, is the X thing. I hate how that looks. I just like the bird. But, dude, I mean, what has Elon even done to Twitter? Like, can you, like, uh... He brought me back. I was banned on Twitter, too. Oh, yeah, he brought, um, he brought Andrew Tate back, too. Yeah, right? I, yeah. I got banned, and then, uh, thank you, Elon Musk, for reinstating me. That was yeah. dope. Yeah, I mean, nice <laughs> that yeah, I mean, he made it like less advertiser palatable. I remember when he got it really upset because he decided to make everybody able to have Twitter blue and then advertisers left in mass, which I think also had to do with like the unbanning of different people, um, which made the platform a little more uh, crazy.
And then after they did, after people were like, uh, like, oh, we don't, the advertisers were pulling out. He's like, oh, can I, I should be able to sue them. They can't do this, which just shows how, how much of an amazing businessman he is. <laughs> that, I, I think I actually said that in the like most critical podcast we did a week ago, but mm. I think it's cool how he like uncensors everybody. Cause I, I believe in the same thing. Like, I don't believe anyone should be censored, whether you like disagree or agree, unless it's like actually you're harming people or like, there's like, but I think if someone's speaking their mind, they should be able to speak their mind. You know what I'm saying? hundred percent. Sure. I'm really surprised you like, you believe in this stuff. Oh dude. I, I think censorship is like one of the, I mean, listen, you do you like, that's fine. I understand what you're saying, but at the end of the day, these are platforms that are trying to make money. And if you're too obnoxious and provocative, they're going to pull you down, especially since you don't have to be obnoxious and provocative. Again, you got like fucking the entire Daily Wire on Twitter. They have no problems. Um, they're saying the same things more effectively than Sneeko. There's more, but they're just not obnoxious like kids looking for attention. And that's what it is. It's, atten- it's, not, the, it's not what they're saying. It's how they're saying it because it's attention-seeking behavior. The worst things ever, unless, you know, it's a threat to like society. You know what I'm saying? When does it become a threat to society? That's a great question. So I think... Um, when censorship... you're advocating for violence? No, I think... Wait, what did you say? When you're advocating for violence? Yes, when... Oh, my bad, I just said no. Yeah, when you're advocating for violence or like um, when you are literally pulling shit out of your ass, um, when you're like slandering people. Literally? Like when you're... Okay, not literally like pulling shit right, out of your right, ass. Right. I mean like... That should be censored. Yeah, if you're saying... If you're saying if you're saying stuff you don't have any knowledge about, I mean... I... Well, I mean, that would be... Sneeko would be banned then. <laughs> You no, know, you should be able to do that. When you're advocating for violence, is where I draw the line. Mm-hmm. I think That's you can fair. be a fucking idiot on the internet. Yeah, yeah. You know like you, if I want to yap about the vaccine, yeah. I should be able to. Like you, like <laughs> I mean, most of the shit you say is you're just going off the fly, dude. I was right about those things. You were right about nothing. <laughs> I don't know. It's so interesting the way that he feels emboldened. Okay. Um. Have you ever been wrong about anything? Of course, I've been wrong, man. So, like, name one moment. I can't think of. It. I'm usually right. Okay. Uh. Okay. Interesting. So, Terrible what made man. you gravitate more towards Rumble as opposed to Kick? Because obviously, you can't stream on like Twitch or YouTube. So, yeah. if you could choose between those two. What made you choose Rumble over Kick? Because I-, I mean, he had Rumble. He was doing Rumble first. I think that's what made him gravitate to that. I, I agree with you. Uh, censorship is really important. As uh, it's an important issue to, to care about, and Rumble stands for free speech. It has a certain identity. Like Rumble is the the website of free speech. Well, yeah, like Rumble is the website where all the losers go to who can't go on other platforms because they don't know how to be respectful, and that's why it's like a cesspool website. So. And Kick is the you know they don't really that's not the culture there. I saw you talking about that last time. Yeah, wouldn't you say um. Wouldn't you say Kick kind of has free speech too, though? Like complete free speech? Yeah, but that's not. Well, Kick is certainly free. Kick is certainly doing a better job of being more of a free speech uh, Twitch. And the reason is because Rumble exists for like the low of the lows to go on to. Really, the, the culture. Because I doubt that Rumble would have banned that fucking Riot LOL kid that was like, you know, getting nude pictures from minors on there. So. Of the platform. The, Rumble... And then showing them to his Discord like a fucking animal. Rumble has a certain identity. Like people go there because they want to watch free speech creators. They want to see different voices. They want to see the band creators. They want to see people. They want to see YouTube and Big Tech dismantled. Or they just want to spam slurs in the chat. Let's be real. Kick, they go there because they want to see, you know, screaming and twerking and gambling. Yeah. Okay. Um, so do you think. Um, Maybe. Do you think gambling like played a part in why you didn't go to? Kick? I think YouTube. I think YouTube has like the best uh, like live streaming audience. It's just the most balanced, in my opinion. Like, like the like the fact that the site is funded by gambling. Yeah, that was a big part. But I like what they're doing. I, I like that they're competing with Twitch. I don't. I'm not a yeah. big fan of um of those other websites. But uh, yeah, I like what they're doing. But that that, that did play a big part. And also, I didn't want to be. I, I like I like kind of even though I'm probably getting like a lot less live viewers on Rumble because like when's the last time you ever like surfed on Rumble to check the live creators? You haven't ever. Never. But I like being one of the only guys on Rumble. You know, yeah. I, I don't want to be because. You know, Twitch is like, that's your site, that's Kai's site, that's, or like, Kick is like Aiden, you know, I'd rather be, I'd rather like have my own mm-hmm. lane. Like Big Fish, Little Pop. It's funny, because I'll see him, like, advertise for Rumble sometimes. I saw, like, one clip of him advertising for Rumble um, on TikTok. It was kind of silly. On- yeah, yeah. It's, yeah, it's better over there. I don't like being an under, I don't want to be underneath someone else's umbrella. Okay, uh, that's kind of a fair point. Do you think, do you think that if you streamed on, like, Kick, you'd have, like, way more viewers, probably? Well, yeah, I'm not sure how many view bots are on there. It's probably multiplied by two yeah. or three all, automatically before you pay for them. And then you view bots okay. pay for them. And then yeah, but what does that really well, mean? Well, he's not going to give you like an honest answer. He's just going to like, he's going to masturbate fucking, he's going to jerk off rumble as much as he possibly can. It's like, oh, it's just view bots, not real viewers. <laughs> okay. I don't really think that factors into any, it's actual impact. So it doesn't matter. Like he, he's obviously uh, very interested in uh, plugging rumble in general, because again, like he's getting paid to advertise it in general for like TikToks and stuff. Cause I've seen it before. So he's obviously going to say anything that disparages any other platform. I mean, I think it directly factors into impact, right? I mean, if you're talking to 30,000 people instead of 10,000, you're talking to 30,000 people. But is it not actually real? Well, right, those people are fake. And I actually know this because January 6th and, and COVID and, and everything's a conspiracy. Well, if it's viewbotted, then no. It is. I mean, yeah, it is. So speaking of viewbotting, uh, what is your thoughts on Neon? <laughs> that was a good segue as an interviewer. Um, he's a good kid, man. I, 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 I'm going to be honest. A good- Neon's a fucking loser. <laughs> Just to be absolutely honest, the guy's a loser. He's pathetic. I mean, he should really reconsider that that's what he wants to do for the rest of his life is be a fucking embarrassment to everybody until he burns out and becomes like Fousey. 
Um, but, I mean, I don't know why would you want to aspire to that. I like kind of like neon. Like, neon viewbots? I wouldn't doubt it, but like, doesn't mean everybody's viewbotting. Like, even though, so let me explain why. Like, because people are going to be like, oh, bro. I saw when you guys were having a phone call, we were in LA in the car together. Yeah, and he dude, was I like, talked to Neon off stream. He's, I mean, you know Neon off stream, bro. Of he's, he's, dude, this is Neon, right? And this is my opinion. I'm not, I'm not Dr. Phil. I'm not a psychiatrist. He's a kid who wants to go viral and get attention and clout. He's yeah. what, 18, 19? He's 19, yeah. Um, How old are you? I'm 22. Mm. So I think Neon is literally just a kid who wants to go viral. He will literally say whatever to get a fucking clip, right? It doesn't matter. When he's talking about like, no way people take this serious, but like he's at the UFC event and he's like, yeah, I'm yeah. gonna press Trump. I'm gonna, it's like, bro, <laughs> no one's taking this kid serious. And then like fucking Dana White got on his ass. Well, not just that the Secret Service took that seriously. Yeah, yeah you can't. Well, they have to, yeah. But, yeah. but it's like, I mean, so what do you think of Neon? Yeah, I, I agree. I, I see through the veil. Like it, it, exactly. Because we have a content brain, we understand him. Yeah. So everything he says, and sometimes we'll say some shit. I'm just like, I know that he- We have a content brain, we understand him. Is that a good thing to have? Is this type of brain where you'll say and do anything for content and attention? Is that like a good thing? Oh, we have content brain. We get it. That's called being terminally online. When you think it's appropriate to be an obnoxious dick just for attention and views. People don't like those types of people. Older people don't like those types of people. That's why Sneeko's audience will remain as young as possible. Because older people aren't sitting here like, oh my God, I can't wait for this you know, 20-something-year-old man-child with the mentality of a 14-year-old to go do something stupid, obnoxious, and say something provocative for attention. Like, I cannot wait for that. You know, and if you want to have an audience of a bunch of kids, be my guest, man. Like, God bless you, but that's all that's going to happen. He's clip farming when he's talking to me, so I'm just like, I just look at him and then he breaks character. And then he laughs. But that's like, so many people don't understand the internet, so they're just like, what? Like, who's this kid? Yeah. And he's like pissing off people in their 30s and 40s. I'm like, you don't get it? Like, so that's why I don't really get angry about the stuff he says. And, you know, he's getting better. Yeah. Okay. He's like, we're all learning, we're all getting better in real time. And I think that he needs somebody on his side because like, so many Those people are against him. Yeah. Yeah, no, I, I, um, because he's a loser. I do actually think he's not a horrible kid. Like, I think he's a good kid because uh, I've spoken to him. I've met him off stream. Guys are like the same age. Right? Um, you have okay. to. But like when he's, you know, when he's in his clip farm state, like you said, like you're just gonna let him clip farm. Like you know what I'm saying? You just, just let him go. He's fucking clip farming, dude. And like, okay. but that's every time. Well, as soon as the camera turns on, that's as, yeah, where he goes. Right and like, I hate how he does this. Yo, I hate how he'll be like in a room with people and like he's just on his phone looking at chat. He's like looking at chat. I've, I've tried. I've tried. It's so unhealthy, bro. It's, it's so bad. It's not good. It's not good. In a room of ten people, like right now, he wouldn't be able to do this podcast. This is why I'm surprised you're doing this. Is like he would be looking at it every three seconds. Yeah, no, it's fucking crazy. Um, okay, speaking of like just the kick streamers. Um, nice. now let me. I, I got like on Twitter, people were like. People thought I was talking bad about like, cause like I'll re-say what I said, but basically people were like, oh dude, you're shitting on like kick and like XQC got mad about it. Fucking Aiden was texting me. I wasn't talking about kick, like the top, the signed kick streamers. What I was saying was kick's card as to how they get streamers is you can't get banned. Oh, you cannot get banned. So then all the cringe lords flock to kick. And they started fucking prostitutes. They started fucking prostitutes <laughs> and committing actual crime on the fucking, on the, on the platform. And like yeah, some yeah. of them weren't getting banned. That's what me and Moist Critical were talking about for 20 minutes. But then when- Yeah, like that one kid, like that Raya LOL guy who would go on there onto like Omegle or whatever the Omegle, um, the new, whatever the new Omegle is, whatever the fuck that's called. He would go on there and then he would like talk to girls. He wouldn't tell them that he was streaming. He would get them to take their clothes, like their shirts off. And if they were underage, he would do it like off camera but he would take pictures of it and put it in his discord like yeah that's the kind of people that are going to flock to to kick and like rumble scuba fucking ryan does a 40 second clip yeah, you yeah, know what i'm saying i know so that pissed me off but i was not talking about those guys are twitch streamers that went to kick like i know it, it, that was fucking annoying you gotta learn to navigate in a podcast because the clip farmers are watching every single second yeah, they're looking for a, exactly. a title yeah this is like I, there's already been so many clips i'm pretty sure we have to cut the first like 10 minutes like oh my god bro, that I, was because, part. I mean or just bleep it yeah we'll figure it out okay um, okay, okay so what do you think Look of the censored streamer unbelievable the matrix got one Oh, well, I just want to add the video on the video. But so basically, I'm so surprised you're doing this. I was talking to Needles over here, like when we were driving over here, like, why would you do this? You know, like you're on a good streak. You're like, you're doing well. You're blowing up. Like, why would you get a guest? Why would you get sneak away? Because so that's a good question. It's like, what a terrible decision. You're, you're doing so well, man. Yeah, like, be because I genuinely. Well, I mean, I don't think it's like I don't think it's some kind of career assassination for him to just talk to Sneeko, um, in general, depending on how he pushed back, pushes back. So I don't think it's like really that big of a deal. You only think it's the most unhealthy thing ever to filter who you talk to. I I disagree with probably ninety percent of the shit you say. What do you disagree with? I mean, like, well, I can't, I can't just say like, oh, I just, that's, I hear I, that all the time. I, I and then people never bring up anything. I, I disagree with I mean, he was pushing back on like January 6th and COVID stuff. He just didn't debate you about it. Like what? Like, so, okay. I'll give you two things I disagree with right now. Okay. So you were, I remember you were shitting on gaming, which was, that's fucked. And then the second thing you were shitting on was, okay, I mean, I guess that means a lot to him as a gamer. Um, well, it's not something you like shit on, but kind of, I mean, this is the thing. I don't want to like take you out of context. I don't want to misquote you yeah. cause that's fucked up. I hate when people do that to me, Fair. but you were kind of saying like, oh, if you're sad, do push ups. Like that was kind of your thing for a little bit. That's a great solution so to that, be sad. That is the worst thing I've ever heard. What, so, so what do you do when you're sad? I mean, it's good for your mental health to do some kind of physical fitness. Like I've been feeling much, significantly better since I've been into the gym. Um, uh, you know, it also gives you like another goal to work on too, which is a nice thing to do. Like, you know what I mean? Hitting those PRs a little bit more every week. And that's a phenomenal thing. 
Um, but the way that Sneeko does it is obviously he's just doing it to be, it's not about like, Hey guys, do you want to feel better mentally? Like you should try to work towards, uh, exercising. It's not really what he's doing. He's just trying to use that as an excuse to be diminishing of like somebody's problems. So he's not like, Hey guys, like you should work out. It'll help your depression. It might not cure it, but it'll help it. He's trying to say depression isn't real. Just do push ups, loser. It's that easy. That's, that is like the issue with what he's saying. Um, so. so that's the worst thing you've so, ever heard. So no, 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 I'm not saying working out is the worst thing I've ever heard. I'm doing push-ups when you're sad is one no, of the best immediate the reason, solutions to being sad. The reason why it's the let me explain. Okay, okay Sneeko. The reason why it's the worst thing I've ever heard is because when you're when you're saying, oh, if you're sad, all you have to do is do push-ups. Doing push-ups is fucking amazing. Working out is amazing. Mm -hmm. That is a beautiful thing. That is fucking timeless. Timeless. You have to understand that some people are genuinely depressed. Some people are genuinely sad. Bullshit. <laughs> yeah, it's true. This, so is, this is what I. This Ironically, like a lot of the reason people are sad, I think, is social media just constantly blasting information into you and making you just super. Um, just giving you a tremendous amount of anxiety. You're seeing like the worst things that are happening in the entire world at all times. It makes it seem like every, like the world's closing in on you. Uh, and you're also getting a lot of times you're getting like radicalized by different, depending on what you're engaging with, um, by different spheres. I mean, like, listen, look on like TikTok. How many young people now are 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 desperate to have an identity, so they're deciding that they have autism or ADHD or whatever else that they have. Um, you know what I mean? That's giving people stress. So this, this, this is, is not I, true. This is not true. So do, do you believe in like brain chemical chemistry? Chemical imbalance? No. I think that's you don't a, believe in chemical imbalance? That's a giant, another giant. Well, yeah, chemical imbalance ob exists objectively. But even if you have clinical depression, like your depression will be better if you do start to like work out and put more effort into yourself. Uh, even if it's not just working out, like shower every day, clean your bed, clean your room, keep your like living space clean, cook for yourself, try not to eat out too much fast food. It's bad for you. Um, you know, have a healthier diet. There's a lot of different things that can contribute to it. So even if you, it wouldn't cure your depression... Like doing some kind of physical fitness will will absolutely have a positive impact on you. So you should do that because you might be able to either come off your drugs or you might be able to reduce the amount of drugs that you're on. Um, and you might be happier because of the negative side effects of some drugs in general. And psyop, JC, come on, man. You chemical believe chemical imbalances are psyop. You think that you can catch sadness like it's COVID. You can't just... That's not how it works, but okay. Catch it. I'm sad. That's not how it works. There's circumstances in your life. There's a reason that you're sad and you got to figure out why. You don't just randomly, you're just chilling all of a sudden, I... Uh, roll over and then something's wrong with your body that's not the case and you know that's not the case and even if you wanted to evaluate yourself to try to figure out what is going on what is going on in your life that makes you sad um you should probably go to a doctor first and potentially go on medication first while you figure that out because it's easier to figure yourself out when you're in a more stable place so like let's say that there is a lot of work that like a lot of things going on in your life that are fucking you over but you can't identify them so you go to a therapist and you go on some kind of medication and then you engage in some kind of therapy and you start to like critically think about your life and you're like okay you know what's making me sad um i come home from work and like I, i'm just not trying to do anything i feel like this overwhelming pit of sadness because i feel like i can't you know climb in the world you know what i'm gonna do i'm gonna start um engaging in a hobby or going to the gym or you know what maybe I'll, I'll go back to school or i'll learn a trade or i'll do this and i'll put my time and energy into this being in a more stable mental headspace could help you get out of that depression and then do things in your life that'll have a positive impact so you can slowly wean off of those medications right it's a lot more complicated than sneeko saying but again like he's just this rich entitled kid that like grew up with money and he just has more of it because he just goes on the computer uh, the internet and just screams for attention so because you've been you've been working hard at what you do, dude. I work hard at what I do. I'm not. I'm. I you don't have time to be sad because no. you're working hard and you're doing things. People who get depressed just have nothing to do. So do something. Do like people who don't have anything to do sometimes will get depressed. Absolutely, it is a it's a phenomenal. This is how you know like Sneeko's incredibly disconnected. He's got like Hassan brain. When you are working like a dead end job and it feels like there's nothing that you could do to upgrade your life, and in some instances that is true, or in a lot of instances you haven't been able to identify what can upgrade your life. It's going to give you like a significant amount of sadness associated with yourself because it's like it's one thing to work hard. It's another thing to work hard to feel like that's it for the rest of your life, right? It's easy when you're some kind of like rich streamer who has a pass or, or a pathway to uh, increase. Like for me, I'm very fortunate that like generally speaking, the more work I put into my content, the better I do. Um, I have like a, I, I'm pretty, I'm decently in tune with like what I need to do to get more popular. <laughs> so like even if we make the same money me and you i have the positive mental headspace of like if i put more effort into what i'm doing there's a good chance that it's going to pay off in dividends you might not feel the same way because like you might be working some fucking corporate slave dead-end job like there's so many different factors that sometimes it's hard to even articulate what those factors are that he doesn't consider because he's a kid he's he's never he doesn't understand how soul crushing the world can be when you're working like a dead-end job he doesn't get it like he just doesn't understand that
Do a push up. That's better than being like a <laughs> dude. I can't even tell if you're clip farming. I'm 100 percent right not. Well, lie, this is what I believe dude. completely. I, I will debate you about this for hours. Cool. Let's do it. Um. So do you don't, you don't think life itself is intrinsically depressing? You don't think life is intrinsically depressing? Sure. Uh, it can be, I guess. But what's okay? What, you can't just sure that. You can't just say sure. Okay. Life itself is intrinsically depressing. You're born. You're that. born against your own will. You're you're then crafted into sure. a person. You become conscious at age three or four. When okay. you get older on, you find your fan. You love your family. You find these friends. Whatever. Okay. You slowly watch everyone <clears> you love and care about decay and die right before your eyes, and you know you soon follow. Jeez. Jesus Christ, I'd be depressed if I had this fucking, uh, if this is the way that I interpreted the world. You're sitting here saying chemical imbalances or not even chemical imbalances, natural depression isn't a real thing. <laughs> on top of that, you're saying if I get on the floor and do 20 pushups, it's okay. It's better, Life than, better than not is, doing it. It's, it is better than not doing it, exactly. but you're sitting, you just. This is the thing is just doing pushups is not going to really make you feel better. One of the things that I've used to struggle with when it comes to like, when it comes to like weight training, it's not having a functioning structure of weight training. And that can be frustrating. So, like, if you're just like, yeah, you know, I'm just going to do push-ups every day. That's not really a routine with any long-term goal that you know is going to pay off. But if you look into something, and I know I talk about it a lot, but I think it's possible. If you look into something like five, like, um, five by five strong list by Mark Ripto, if you're somebody who's never worked out before, it's a phenomenal resource that gives you t structure and a general base of understanding on how to work out. Wendler 531 is another one. It's a great intermediate program. Uh, five by five mad cows is a great intermediate level program. You know, these are things like it's not just what you're doing. It's the prospect of what you could be doing in the future. And if you don't have that, if you don't feel like there's going to be a payoff, people tend to tune out. And again, that's why, like, that's the same thing with working out. Like if somebody's like, hey, just go to the gym, which is what Sneeko seems to do. It's like, OK, cool. What do you do when you get there? You don't know. You're a young person or you're somebody that's inexperienced in the gym. You don't know what the fuck you're doing. So now you're there. Oh, I'm going to bench. But you don't really know how to bench. You don't know how to properly execute it. You're probably going to hurt yourself because people don't know what the fuck they're doing. So you go there and you try to do stuff and you're kind of just floundering around. You're not really seeing a payoff from week to week because, again, you're floundering around. You haven't really done any prep work. And then you're just like, okay, and you're sad again. But if you go in there and like, you know, I would say if you're somebody who wants to start like weight training, go buy five by five strong lifts and go to the gym and walk on the treadmill and read that book for uh, like three weeks. Well, five by five. Five by five is Mark Ripto's starting strength. Starting strength is a five by five routine. What are you talking about, dude? But there are different. Five, okay, excuse me. There are different five by five routines. Mark Ripto's five by five is starting strength. It is a five by. Shut the. Why am I getting? I'm, what am I doing? Okay. Or look at Bill Stars or fucking five by five. Who cares? Buy books that are from people who know what they're talking about. Like Jim Wendler, Mark Ripto. Um, there's like Chad Wesley Smith's books isn't bad. Uh, Brandon Lilly I've read. The Lilly Bridge Method I've read. You know, buy these. I've read Derek Poundstone's method. Like buy these different things, resources, and educate yourself on how to properly execute it. But stay in a five by five routine for like probably the first three to six months. You know, learn how to properly execute technique. Don't worry about the weight of, of the uh, what you're lifting because like don't ego lift. You know, like and take it slow. You know, these things give you like future prospects of like understanding yourself. And then you actually get to build because now you're not just going to the gym. You're building while you're there. You said depression's bullshit. It is. It's better to believe that than to believe that. Like, see, you just described life and I can describe life the same way too. Nothing you said was wrong, but it's your outlook that's wrong. Like you said, oh, you're, you're born into life and then people die. Like you can view it from a beautiful, a beautiful perspective. You could think you can, but it's going to be very difficult to shift your perspective, especially based on a lot of other factors that we've already just talked about. Okay. God gave me the gift of life. I'm born and then my family may die. There's hardships that I have to endure, but that makes life all the more beautiful. That makes me appreciate it more. The fact that my loved ones aren't going to be here forever. It makes me want to cherish the time that I have now. Yeah. It makes the moments in the time that I have be able to work and do things to create it makes it more interesting and, and amazing because it's not going to be here forever. Somebody uses gift of life to do the best. Yeah, I don't think that Sneeko like understands even what he's saying or believes half the things he's saying. Like the mortality of life isn't something that young people tend to understand. And I've like you tend to understand it more once you fall in love. Like all jokes aside, Sneeko's never really been in like any real love. I mean he was in cuck love, but you know, being with my wife has made me realize like holy shit, like this is very temporary. It's a very scary thing. So some people are are have that like pressing down onto them sooner. Exactly. And I'm what I'm not saying that that's how I think. I'm saying that that's, that's how why, losers think. That's why people are depressed. Yeah, losers who don't do anything. You don't think that way, so I don't know why. <laughs> like, there's a lot of people who are depressed losers, according to Sneeko, who are legitimate contributors to the economy and to like infrastructure that are like nurses, doctors, um, people who are actually, you know, necessary rather than some like bullshit moron Twitch streamer or excuse me, Rumble streamer. And like I'm there too. Like I'm not. <laughs> It's not pretending that you you have this incredible value or that you matter. You literally scam your audience to pay you like 50 bucks a month for a bullshit course.
<laughs> that doesn't do anything for anybody oh, except advocating. for except for funnel money to you because it's a pyramid scheme for people that, that you're not anything like it's, it's not that i'm advocating it's i have my own thoughts i have my i'm a very positive person right and that's the right way every, to every day i wake up in the morning and i'm thankful that i'm alive right I, that's how i've always been i always will yeah i feel the same way till the day i die that's great i've always been a positive person my wife so my wife has like my wife is like a depressed person she probably has clinical depression she doesn't want to get she doesn't want to go to therapist and get anything like looked at because she, you know even though she's a behavioral specialist because she just that's a that's a very big door to open um, because it's like one of those things where when you are very depressed, you're here and then you go to a therapist and your depression will most likely go up. Your anxiety, your frustration and stress will go up until you work through your problems. So you go there, you start identifying problems. You, you get worse and worse as you understand them. And then you start to process them and deal with them. And then your overall, your depression and your, you know, all your mental health problems will go down, but it's a process and it's difficult and she doesn't want to do it, but she's very, like, she's depressed. I'm very, I have a very positive outlook on life. Like when something sucks, I literally, and I've told her this before, like, I'm just happy that I'm with my wife. <laughs> I know that sounds so cringe and it's true. Like I'm sitting here and like all of a sudden bad happens. Like, hey, you know what? I'm married to the love of my life. Like what could really be that bad? I'm married to the love of my life. I, I'm a fucking YouTube streamer where I stream three or four hours a day. I make content for myself. Like I do pretty well overall. I have a very amazing support structure. I have a solid family. Everything's going pretty well. So like I'm doing really well. My wife has different interpretations with the world. Like she's happy to be married to me too. And she loves me infinitely. But it's just like she has a different brain process, the way that she processes information. It's not as easy for her. So it's like... It's so easy to say, change your mindset. But when you have people that are like legitimately beneficial to society, like my wife, who's objectively more necessary to than my, myself or to Sneeko or, you know, even Jinxy saying like, I have a depression, you, like, <laughs> like, okay, you start to listen and care more because it's an actual person that matters more than us. <laughs> like saying it, you know what I mean? Like nurses will be like, I'm depressed. Oh, I, I can't. The nurse is more beneficial than the fucking Twitch streamer who has an incredibly easy life or a kick streamer or a YouTube streamer. My life is a fucking, my life is golden right now. And hopefully I can keep it going. But like, what the fuck am I, who am I, who am I to be like, yeah, guys, it's just a mindset. Like there is a level of mindset. And like, but it's not easy to just be like, guys, just change how you feel. <laughs> just, just fucking stop feeling this way. Nah, man, it's sometimes it can beat the fuck out of you. Cause I know what it's like to be like super depressed. Like, I know what it's like to not want to be alive. I know what it's like to be miserable, to feel like I'm grinding myself into the fucking earth. I know what it's like to be with somebody that grinds me down, who doesn't support me, who doesn't hold me to, to, to count. You know what I mean? Like I, it's fucking depressing, dude. And you just kind of suppress it and you just move forward. You know, and you just act stoic and then, you know, whatever. But it's like, that's the contrast is like, I used to fucking hate myself and want to die every day. And now I'm just I'm like, there's no reason that I'm that I'm fucking popular. Like, I'm insanely lucky. But it's, so it's like, I know both perspectives and I know that like there are real people dealing with real shit. And you got fucking Sneeko here. He's never had any real problems in his entire life, except he let his fucking girlfriend have sex with another guy. And he's sitting here like, oh, I know, I know how the world works. You're like 24 years old and you've never grown up before. <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> Do more push-ups. Drink more water. You should drink more water. But it's like, shut the fuck up, dude. <laughs> he's just pathetic. Just shut your mouth. <laughs> this is such a, lo a cringe loser. But you're saying depression's bullshit and that's fine. Even if it, like it's better to view it like that, like it's so not. if you believe that, like you've never had like real depression, so of course it's it's easy. It's not better. It's easier easier to view that you can just catch it like a like a disease how does that what, that's not how it, okay what is your solution to that so so say say you're right like I, and i just uh, behavioral therapy can catch depression now what i'm depressed nobody's saying you catch depression <laughs> it's like a pokemon to this guy i don't think depression's a disease i just think people just think about life and they get depressed you know what i'm saying and they should stop doing that and then do something better and be stop, positive like you stop thinking this is the thing what should they do to be positive because Nico can't give like that he can't give you the pathway he's never been in the state of like depression he can't give you the pathway of like what you can do to be better. He doesn't understand how to do that. He doesn't understand that it's like soul, it's like your job is soul crushing you. It's like very difficult to just be better. Stop thinking about sad stuff and think adopt a positive mindset so that you can get out. Oh, it's like a grind set. Hey guys, you know those bills that you're really behind on? Stop thinking about it. You're no longer depressed, loser. <laughs> guys, stop thinking about your bills. Stop thinking about your dying, you know, family members. Stop thinking about all the life stressors. Stop thinking about your failed relationships. Just fucking stop being sad. Oh my god, it's working. It's working. I have no stress anymore. Like, if life is miserable, it's better to not think about that as well, and it's better to do something about it. Right, do okay. a push-up. Yeah, if you're sad, do a push-up right now. So, the, I cool. mean, and like, do a push -up, like, guys. I, like, I kind of want to say, I want to reiterate, you know, obviously, okay. I'm a very positive person. Yeah, I always have been. I'm so. hardworking. But I'm saying, like, there are people that deal with shit like that, and, and like, you can't kind of, I'm just saying you can't kind of just say it's bullshit. That's all I'm saying. Why not? Well, because, like, 
you're different than everybody else, right? You have your own outlook on things. What if someone else's outlook is totally different? They don't care. But their outlook they isn't working. They, <laughs> like, no, no, but it's clearly- It's not just an outlook if it's like the life experiences around them. Failing if they're depressed. If they have the outlook that depression is crippling their life, stop thinking that way. Start believing it's bullshit because it's clearly not working. Okay. Incredible. Like by definition, it's so what do you failing. Mean, define working, what do you mean? Working is doing something, building on something, creating. No, I mean, uh, like, working is when you clip farm. Define like it's working because you said whatever they're doing is not working. So working is when your new computer comes in soon, so the fucking stream quality goes up. If you're depressed, <laughs> that's when people will start watching me more. <laughs> your outlook on life is not working. Period. Wow, incredible. Okay. Because the, being depressed means is the absence of action. It's sitting. It's not so having action, a positive mindset. You think action is is working, right? Like action. Action, yeah, is moving forward. Interesting. Have you like um, have you read like uh like when you were in high school? Did you read like Shakespeare books at all? Yeah, I did. Okay, so. What are like your, what would you say are your goals like as a, as a man? What are your goals? Seek truth through funny. That's my motto. No. Okay. Seek truth through funny. Try to be funny first. I, I want to get to the truth, but I don't think people listen if you're not being entertaining. You need to go captivate people. You need to go garner attention. And I think that you should do it in the right way. And the best way is to make people laugh. If you can make people laugh by telling the truth, then you're doing two positive things at once. All you do is shout. What's, what makes people laugh about that? Well, other than kids. That's what I want to do with my streams. That's why, that's why I started streaming um, in 2022. Wow. Okay. That's Early. interesting. It wasn't being as effective with my YouTube videos. I started like, I hit a million, but it took a long time and I was uploading like once a week and it wasn't getting that output. And then when I started streaming, I was able to like really like quadruple my output in one day. And I just like, the first day I streamed May 1st, 2022, I was yeah, like. Yeah, it's like lower effort content. It's easier to put out, same. Like, this is definitely the way to go. Because I have a live audience, I can repurpose the content, I'm capturing people's attention, people are getting energetic, I'm interacting with them real time. This is the way to do it. And you know, some people are getting some benefit out of it. Dude, yeah, and when you were, I mean, when you were a kid, I saw some of like your old YouTube clips. You actually like started off pretty wholesome, I'd say. I'm well, that's when people actually respected him because they were, he was like saying things that resonated with people. Still wholesome. You think so? I just told you that yeah. I think that you should you, you should work hard. I should I'm telling you that you should laugh, that yeah. you should get to the truth, that you should Whoa, you should laugh? Holy fuck. You have action in your 100%. life that you shouldn't be sad. Those are all really wholesome positive yeah. things. Um so okay. and I was saying all that same stuff when I was a kid. You could watch me when I was like 14, 15 yeah. saying just like, get off your ass and do something. Yeah. I'm like 14 saying you know, you were pretty, like you were well spoken. I was like, yapping yeah. like I mean you're a literal conspiracy theorist now that hangs out with white supremacists <laughs> and like <laughs> says COVID isn't real because you say so. But then we'll we'll be like, you know what Nick Flint does? Maybe black and Hispanic people are biologically inferior. Like that's your entire shtick. I don't know talking about before puberty yeah so at what point does i mean would you say you're a controversial person would you say that yeah of course sure yeah i mean okay. the, the truth is controversial in a world of lies okay hold on, hold on benjamin there, so there are some things that are controversial there are truths that can be controversial and i talk about this before i never say anything to try to be provocative but there are some things that i'm going to say that are going to upset you and that is what it is and like i don't want to upset people but that's just life sneeko says things to be provocative Okay, he's not telling you any truths, first of all. He's supporting conspiracy theories, but he says it in a provocative way for attention. That is different that is different from having an opinion that is not really mainstream and saying it respectfully uh, because you believe in it. I don't think that he really believes in anything. So <clears throat> these are two very fundamentally different things. Just to be clear. Vero, um, <laughs> would you say, would you say at what point in your career did you become controversial? Okay, Hasanabi. what did you do? When I realized that on your website like Twitch that you can't say how many genders there are. People say that I yap about this too much, but it's a very You can say that there's two, only two genders on Twitch. Nobody cares. Who gives a shit? Like obviously, like I th I believe that there's a third, the nine binary, and that's fine. I don't get it. I don't have to get everything in the entire world. I also don't understand um other things as well. Like I can understand people who don't understand the concept of God or organized religion. So, like, these are things that are internal experiences that are objectively unprovable that people give people a significant feeling of, like, euphoria to believe. Well, who the fuck am I to sit here and say that? But what people, who gives a fuck? Are there people who are, like, non-binary that are doing it for attention? Probably. It's probably, like, a lot of young people that are just looking to be unique. But, you know, there's some people that exist. I respect people with gender dysphoria. Like, it is what it is, man. That's a struggle I'm happy I don't have to go through. I don't know. Very simple reality of the world that you know, but you probably can't say it because you're on Twitch. I don't want to like put you on the spot and make you say it. But like, yeah, there's, two genders, man. there's men and women, but you can't say simple stuff like that. You can't say the word simp on Twitch because they want you to become a simp. You can say the word simp on Twitch. That's like not a banned word anymore. They want you to say the and then beat your meat and then get fat while watching Pokemon and watch Hasanabi cool. have terrible takes about the world. <laughs> yeah, you're right. <laughs> Streaming's harder than working in a mind. <laughs> and give your money away to these people that like, and then Jadia comes on. He's funny. I mean, like you, like you do kind of the same thing. Like you're not being as explicit about it, but you're literally telling people that it's just a mindset to get less depressed because you're so disconnected from the world just like Hassan is that you think that way that's true but you've never struggled in any real capacity in your entire life ban him and they ban him and then no one funny exists like that, that's why you're doing well I'm like why are you having me on because I, I really I want you to last man you're doing some good stuff so what so what did you bro no one I'm not like dude I, no I'm not gonna get fucking banned by proxy of you dude I hope not you I, have I, your I own really fucking, not. yeah that's true, you, that's true. Your own you did enough pushbacks so you're gonna be good so why um why do you feel that Hassanabi had a disagreement with you like or, or would you say that jump started it was you beefing with Hassanabi 
You jump started what? You said, well, I said at what point? Yeah, they're both two miserable fucking disconnected loser pricks. <laughs> did you become controversial? You brought up Hassan. Amin. Oh, no, no, I was just saying, because you, you said Ben Shapiro, you called me Ben Shapiro, so I'm calling you Hassan Abi. Like, that's the, that's oh. the difference. Because I said the truth is controversial in the world of lies. The reason I'm controversial is because of how many, like, hula hoops you need to jump through in order to get, get a paycheck. Like, there's, there's a reason why, you know. So do you understand, like, business or no? 100%. I'll explain it. Um, so the reason why <laughs> it's so filtered on Twitch and YouTube is yeah. because they want ad revenue. 100%. So well, yeah. the reason well, YouTube is not as filtered as Twitch, just to be clear. Like, YouTube, you know, you have Destiny. <laughs> Uh, being based on YouTube. YouTube is a very different... I honestly think YouTube is the best platform out there. It's certainly the most consistent, um, you know, and they don't censor you that aggressively. Like, obviously, they do still try to stay, like, advertiser palatable. But generally speaking, and I really hope that this doesn't bite me in the ass, but even when I had a lot of issues last year of getting uh, things taken down, um, and like, yeah, I was getting things taken down and like, I was getting, um, you know, week long bans. Most of the time they reversed it. It took a week and it sucked, but they reversed it. And then they put in new measures to make it easier to not get banned. So I can appreciate it. Like there was a time where they had, they're very uh, aggressive about, um, the monetization shit on their, their, their platform, what can and can't get monetized or get like limited monetization. They lowered that down at some point because they're trying, right? Then I remember getting banned for stuff that like I shouldn't have gotten banned for and like the internal service sucks. You have to go to Twitter, which is bullshit, but, and they would investigate it and they would overturn it. And then they implemented something, I think at the end of last year, which now explicitly explains why you got a ban or a strike for a particular policy violation, whether it's commu uh, whatever community guideline it might be, whether it's like hate speech or misinformation. I, well, not misinformation. I, I don't think that's a thing. It might be hate speech um, or whatever, like whatever classification there might be, right? And they tell you why. And then it's like, oh, you feel better. And then they subdivided them all. So if you get a strike for something, um, you can now take a little test and they'll remove that strike after I think a month or three or six months. I know it sounds weird, but they'll do that now. Like it'll go away, which I think is a great thing after you take a little test. And then if you get another strike for something different, that's separate. So now like, yeah, if you have two different types of strikes, they, they consider two different things. So like they're doing a lot to help the creator uh, and, you know, navigate uh, their way to interact. I think that YouTube is like, honestly, it's like the best. I think it's it's got a decent I, I appreciate that it, it you need to be somewhat aggressive against certain things because too much because you don't want like an insane group of people on here. It pushes people away when you're like, OK, with people going on and saying like a, a, bar a barrage of slurs and chats. That draws in the most pathetic, loser, toxic people. So, like, them being like, yeah, if you do that, you were going to ban you. If you encourage that in your chat, we're going to ban you. Like, okay, good. That that's, keeps the audiences and it keeps the creators, like, happy and keeps people here that, like, actually want to do more than be as shocking and edgy as possible. So, yeah, I think YouTube is the best. Twitch, I don't know. I just don't like their monetization platform or whatever. I don't really like them in general. I don't like the audience as much. I, this is more rounded here. But I don't think YouTube is, you could really categorize them in the same way as Twitch. But that's why I'm controversial, because everybody has to go and... Ditch. They're not, dude, they're not saying that they hate you because you're giving these takes. They're saying, oh, we want to be able to run ads on Sneeko's stream. Maybe he should cock it back a little bit or we ban him, right? Do you get that at all? Do you get the business side of it? Right, but like, Twitch lied about why they banned me. They said it was for ban evasion. Like, at least be honest, they just... No, YouTube, YouTube took you down for ban evasion, not Twitch. And they did take you down. One of your strikes was ban evasion because you ban evaded. Oh, fuck, I fucked up, fuck. Because you literally ban evaded. I'm gonna actually restart. Um, <laughs> you, you posted on your secondary channel when you had a ban on your primary channel. You can't do that. Just, just tell me, okay, we can't make money off you. Don't say that it's for suspension evasion when I just, I, was, I went on Twitch. You, you did, it was not, Twitch didn't ban him for suspension, for evasion. It was YouTube that did that because he did that. Right after I got banned on YouTube and I was eating a salad with my mic off and then they banned me. It had nothing to do with Twitch at all it was because you went on to your second youtube account and you posted on there and that's ban evasion like it's not like a hot take holy fuck okay i mean for suspension evasion it's like just be straight well, were you suspended on twitch I no I, I started an account right after i got banned on youtube and they said suspension evasion i wasn't even talking to ban me no that's not what happened so you got banned you got banned for <laughs> he posted on his alt account that was his account like he acts like nobody knows this this is the reason why he got banned he got it was considered a ban evasion ban evasion permanently banned for ban evasion yeah yeah i mean it's indefinite i still am banned i haven't, I haven't checked maybe I, I could i know that no i 
Apply it again, yeah. No, yeah, but I do think that's another thing I disagree with you on now that we're here. Because, um, okay. like, it's hard to think of 20 things but when we're talking. It's pretty easy. Yeah, yeah. Um, like, it's said when he has to intentionally lie to Miss, like, in general. Like, you can tell. Like, he's inten intentionally lying about what's going on. Like, that's how you know that it's all an act. He knows that he didn't get hit with ban evasion because he posted on Twitch after he got banned from YouTube for a week. Like, everybody, like, should know that it's because he posted on his second channel. YouTube channel and that's considered ban evading like when I was banned for like the week I had I didn't do my podcast with my wife like that's just what you do I mean we don't do it anymore but that's the way of the world um you think everything is so filtered because people have an ideology and a vision and emotion and a movement when I think they want to make money because money is how the world goes around. So they know they can't run ads on your stream because you're talking about all this shit. You're talking about politics. You're talking about epidemics. Yeah. It's not because he's talking about these things. Again, it's because he's promoting fucking insane conspiracy theories and he's encouraging his audience to say slurs in his chat. Like he constantly goes on there and tells people to say like, like, like that's what it comes down to. Like if you look at the chat role, it's just a bunch of people saying wild slurs. He's associating himself with literal white supremacists like Nick Fuentes. Of course people are going to say fucking outrageous shit. But the problem goes deeper than just the platforms. My beef is not even just with the platforms. It's the fact that you need to say those certain things in order to get advertisers' money. Like, why do the advertisers only want to push a certain idea? Again, we know this is not true because Ben Shapiro has a very successful monetized YouTube channel. It's not true. You don't have to say certain things for attention. Apology. Why is that? Great question. So imagine you're Gatorade, right? And you're saying, okay, let's throw a 30-second Gatorade Twitch ad. We can throw it. Like maybe on Twitch. I don't care about Twitch. I mean, if we're specifically talking about Twitch, like, sure, whatever. I don't care. But like, we're he's also bringing YouTube into the conversation. So like, this is not what you need to do to be popular. You can still be mainstream and say controversial uh, counter opinions and still be fine. Ben Shapiro does it fine. The Daily Wire does it fine. And then they save the stuff that they really want to say for their, their actual website. This works out just fine. On, oh, Queso. He's playing Fall Guys and laughing. Or Sneeko. He just said the vaccine causes cancer. Or you didn't say that, but see, but there's the thing: the vaccine is hurting people. That's what I said. It's not, but okay. Like, like, oh look, Sneeko's trying to like warn you that you might get myocarditis, or let's but, go to a hot tub streamer who's shaking your tits upside down. Like, okay, oh. but like, you're not. That's not what you're saying. That you might get that. That is a very limited potential risk of getting the COVID vaccine. Getting actual COVID has exponentially more of a negative impact on those conditions. So you're not like being in context of like, hey guys, some medications have uh, have backsides or whatever the fuck it's called, have side effects. Every medication, every vaccine, everything has a side effect, but you're not weighing it proportionally. You're trying to make it seem like you will get this problem. You won't, most likely. It's incredibly rare for it to happen. And it's better to get a vaccine than to actually get COVID because COVID has a much higher chance of like giving you myocarditis. Oh, but, oh, but there's little black bars covering her giant fake ba boob titty. Yeah, you should ban those people too. Nipple. But Sneeko, are you a doctor? Okay, am I a, am I a, what does that have to do with, like, I, it has to do with everything. But you know what's crazy? On Twitch, you can say, all those creators, Pokemon, Hasana, all these people, they'll tell you, get the vaccine. And that doesn't get you banned. Like, that, the me yeah, because they're, even if they're dumb people, because Hasana and Pokemon are dumb losers, they're, they're, they're quite literally referencing objective statistics from doctors. The whole thing is, is, a, is, a, is a, like, that's a, a bad argument because there's only one position that you're supposed to have. If you're not okay. a doctor, you can say, everybody get the vaccine and they'll have vaccine ads. Some of the advertisers are- Because the medical consensus is that the vaccine is good. Pfizer, you'll be watching like Jinxie drooling and then you see like a fucking Moderna ad pop up and there's like Michael Phelps has a Band-Aid. He's like, good job, Band-Aid, whoa, got vaccine wow. like a got milk ad. There's one ideology you need to push. <laughs> okay. Yes, thank you. Somebody said it. A lot of them weren't. A lot of them were just getting paid. No. Mo the overwhelming majority of them were. Any, like, credible doctor was saying get the vaccine. Paid to. The vocal ones, yeah. Because the, the vocal doctors that were anti-vaccine, what happened? They got packed up. Sure, sure. I disagree with that. Because they're dumb and they're wrong. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah, so I was, I was going to say that when you were, like, done with whatever that was. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, mm -hmm. basically, yeah. So, Sneeko, you're not a doctor. You're not. You're a um, YouTuber. Well... Okay, you're a rumble streamer. I'm a rumbler. Stop calling me a YouTuber. You're, okay, you're not a doctor, but, 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 but you're talking. Yeah. You're, you're shitting on Hassan and Pokey, which cool. Shit on whoever you want. I'm not shitting on them. They're, they're sure they're great. <laughs> dude, come on, bro. you've been you've been. Come on. Okay, I, did, I just said that because you called me Ben Shapiro. But my point is, oh, but you didn't get the vaccine, bro, dude. And that's and that's and that's my that's my personal because, decision. That's but if people get the vaccine, that's great. Do you, have a, do you have a problem with that? I do have a problem. Dude, with, I, I have a problem. You have a problem with people doing what they want to do to their, their body. They don't even want to do it. A lot of them didn't want. Most of the people that are watching this right now, they regret taking it because they were forced to. They said you're gonna, you're gonna. Get I don't think most of the people that took it regret it. Like I said, like I said, like I did not want to get the vaccine when I did. I was skeptical because it came out quickly, and my wife had to get it for work. So I said, yeah, I'll get it with you. Nothing happened. I don't regret getting it. It was literally just a. It, it was just a non thing. It was just a thing that happened. That's it. There was just a thing that happened. <laughs> Like it, nobody, nobody's regretting it now. Like, or maybe, the majority of people aren't regretting it. Most people are probably like, I'm happy I got that.
<laughs> which is actually what most people feel like, especially older people that are at higher risk. Nobody, but the people aren't regretting it. They're regretting it now. No, they're not. <laughs> they're just like, okay, it happened. You get kicked out of school. You can't come to work unless you get this. They regret it and they hated it. And they pretty much, they got injected without the permission, non-consensual, consensual injection. So but back to like base. Okay. Yeah, yeah. We're, what, what I was saying, what he was saying, yeah. we're not saying we agree or disagree. We're saying Hassan and Pokey were taking the stance of doctors, right? That you're not, right? That's what, that's what we were saying. They're taking the stance of science, studies. Of the promoted doctors. Okay. All right. We're going in circles. Yeah, yeah. Of just science. Agree to disagree. Yeah. Yeah. Agree to disagree. Okay. All right. That was actually a good move. Just move on because you're not going to get uh, through to Sneeko. He has a, he has a narrative. He's not going to fold on that. Um. So Sean Strickland beat the fuck out of you. I'm still standing. Still <laughs> hey, standing. First yeah, off. I mean, that was an attention. Again, like Sneeko was going on talking about um, like being content brain. Like it was for attention. He wanted to do that fight with him so that he can get attention. Could the sneak can get attention, like more mainstream attention by getting beat up by this guy. And then this guy got more mainstream attention too. He's getting a little bit more of a pop. I mean, he's already like a very popular, but MMA fighter, but you know, people are talking, he's, he's being chatted about more, you know, when you're at the top, uh, it's about like staying at the top. So you want to have the type of stuff. Like, of course, that's a whole thing. It's a content brain thing. I actually respect you for even getting in the fucking yeah. I would never I would never do that. What do you think would happen if you went in there? I I don't. I mean, you did it because you wanted attention. Like I think that's pathetic when you're f performing for attention in like that kind of a way. Cease to exist. I wouldn't be in this chair right now. I'd die. Um so good shit, bro. No, um can you walk me through that? What are your thoughts on that? How do you feel before? How do you feel after? Felt good before, good after. Just got right back to work. I started uh, right after the the fight ended. I just went started to do jujitsu with Jake Shields and just went right back to streaming that day. I went to power slap right after and then did a five hour IRL stream. So I was good before. I mean, I was never disrespectful to them. A lot of people have this misconception. They're like, oh, you like you got what you asked for. I never asked for it. He asked me. I never insulted him. You know, I was never disrespectful and just got in there. And, you know, someone asked me to swallow, I'll do it. Yeah. So let's hypothetically say the ref doesn't come in there. What happens? It wasn't a ref. That was just a rant. That was Forrest Griffin, a former UFC Oh, fighter. I know Forrest Griffin. Actually, knows. Yeah, I know, I know Forrest Griffin. Yeah, yeah. That was Forrest Griffin? Yeah. Wow. He came in there. I think he was like training and then he Small saw world. him and he came in. There was no ref. I didn't have a team. The people that were throwing the towels, they were not my people. It was not, I didn't, I would have kept going. Those, those <laughs> okay. towels were not mine. Like, Sneeko, he was throwing piss around. Like, you were not going to keep going, dude. Trust I, me. I didn't fall. How, how long was that flurry? Fall. Six seconds? Not longer. 20 minutes. Maybe it was 15. No, I think it was like nine seconds max. I think if no one stepped in, I don't think you'd be. The round was almost over. Okay. <laughs> I almost got to the clock. I was, I was trying to like get my time. I was trying to get to the clock. Okay. What do you, uh, what do you think of Sean Strickland? Like, aside from like, like as a person, what do you think of him? Okay. I could give you um, on camera, off camera. I, might, I respect the guy. I mean, I think, yeah. he's, I think he's saying a lot of important things right now, especially when it comes. He's an MMA fighter. Like, good for him, man. He seems to be pretty talented. That shit's fucking extreme. I would never want to do MMA fighting. I don't want to get a TBI. <laughs> the culture war. I think he's almost close to the full truth. Um, <laughs> Why? Because he says some provocative stuff on Twitter. Like, oh, whatever. Say it. Peace. Speak your peace, I guess. But, <laughs> okay. I won't say too much because we're, we're... I would say that I don't usually listen to fighters about what their political opinions are. Not not to be rude, you know? <laughs> like, good. God bless. Say your stuff. But that doesn't... Like, I separate those two things. Like, you know what I mean? That you're a good fighter. Good for you. You know, I don't really care about what your politics are because it's not really meaningful because I don't think that <laughs> that's your area of expertise. We're on camera. You don't need to be able to get demonetized. About a certain war. We're probably already demonetized by now. Yeah, well, that's all. Okay, well, I, I think he's, he's a little bit misled about um, about what's going on. I don't want to say these key words. I really don't. But what, what are you going to bring up? Jews? What? About a war that's happening in the Middle East. I think he's a little bit misled about that. But I, Oh, because he supports Israel? Okay. I think he's close to the truth. And what he's How did I know it was going to be about fucking Jews? Because <laughs> <laughs> Sneeko is a conspiracy theorist that thinks that Jewish people run the world. Like, that's like a legitimate thing. He's a fucking psychopath. Saying is good. But I also think that there's a phrase, hurt people, hurt people. I think that he I think it comes from a, hurt, a place of hurt. And he, that's the reason that he fights. And I think a lot of MMA fighters, they do it because they have a love for the sport and respect and all this stuff. And they treat it like it's a game. I think okay. that he, he genuinely wants to get in the octagon and kill people. And cool. I think he's been hurt. You know, someone who wants to do that has to be hurt before. Okay. Um, I saw Joe Rogan was saying, he was kind of talking about it and he thought it was a little fucked up, like how hard he went. Yeah. Um, what do you think? Are you happy with how it happened? I'm not, oh, he's just so happy to be talked about by Joe Rogan. No, I'm not happy. I mean, I mean do you it think, happened. Do you think it was fucked up? I mean, the guy's literally a machine, dude. No, he could have killed think, you. I, I don't think it was fucked up. I don't think so. He could have. I mean, you might have actually got brain damage from it and don't know yet. I'm fine now. I don't think there's much to damage there, brother. Like, do you think I have brain damage? Probably before Sean Strickland. Oh, um, but <laughs> uh, yeah, I agree. Dude, oh, wait, Sneeko, this is unrelated, but what is your IQ? You took an IQ test, right? It's about 130. No. Whoa. Uh, crazy, dude. I've taken many online tests before. And the one that you're pulling up, I was trying to be funny. I was trying to entertain the audience. You're not going to bring up the one that says 135 or the one that says 140. You're going to bring up the one that says 95. Oh, that's interesting. Result of IQ test. Your IQ was measured to 95. You were trolling? Yeah, that was an online test. <laughs> I have bet. Trolling. Those things aren't real. But you see, that's the one that gets circulated around. You of all people know that fake clips get shown out of context. Yeah. The 131 isn't shown. The 115 wasn't shown. I've taken a lot of them. That wasn't even a real Mensa test. It wasn't a real regulated test. That was an online one. Stop. Come on. Okay. Uh, uh, yeah, I'll give you that. Sure. Um, so what are your thoughts on like Rumble as a whole, as a platform. Do you love Rumble? What are your biggest problems with it? What do you hate about it? Let me know. First, I want to see what you think about Rumble. We were
like everybody goes that's unpalatable for other pro platforms. They go there and then they they talk about how it's more amazing because it's around like full cope brain because they got fucking banned from other platforms and they want to double down. First all you, um, I have my Discord clips that I react to and uh, Needle sent a clip over here. It was like, uh, hey Jinxie, come over to Rumble. Six Nine and Sneeko are in Rumble. It was a TTS and then you go, what? <laughs> Who gives a fuck? <laughs> it was just like, yeah. like it was a weird selling thing. Like, hey, come over to Rumble Six Nine and Sneeko, like Nightmare Blood. Which I would, yeah. It's a weird, like, like what is this website? I would, it's a weird selling point. But um, yeah, I, it's getting better. It's a lot better than when I first joined. I joined when it looked like Reddit in two thousand five. It's it's got a lot better. I like the UI. I like the the creators that are on there, and we have good free speech. There's a lot of there's a good diverse array of creators. It's good. Yeah. So I think Rumble's a shitstorm. This is really what diversity. It's all like pretty far right wing people. <laughs> you know, I'm not saying like a far left wing people are amazing or anything. I'm just saying. What's the diversity on there? Um, I think it has the worst user interface in internet history. Um, I've actually tried to watch your streams on Rumble, and like I don't even know, I don't even know if it's streaming like. or not. It's that bad, especially on mobile, because I watch streams on mobile. Mm. But I think if Rumble fixed the UI, that'd be really good. They yeah. need to fix the they need to fix the UI. Would you agree with that? You want me to call the CEO right now so you fix it? Call the CEO of Rumble right now. Let's see. Let's see. I've had this conversation about the about the UI. Would all you the agree time? with me? Um, do you think the UI is fucked? I think it's better than it was. Like there's things you, that need to improve. When do you, you think? Do you think the UI is fucked? No, I don't. Interesting. I don't. I, I maybe I'm used. To, I think it just. I feel like Twitch's UI kind of sucks too. What the hell? How come he has like no video? I guess he just doesn't post videos. I feel like Twitch is UI. So I mean, this just looks like a shittier Twitch. And like, okay, three hours ago. Oh shit! This is worse than we ever could have imagined. And it's Biden's fault. Oh jeez, I knew. I knew it. Oh look, Vivek Ram Swami is. These new adjustable glasses. Whoa. Okay, let's move on. Different than 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 Twitch. You know, it's a different website. Let me call him. Yeah, call him. I actually want to see what he says about that. Let's see if he, see if I got motion Jinxie. What's his name by the way? Uh, Chris. Oh, it's your first conversation. With it. Yeah, you've never met him before. He does not know you, little bro. Bro, he was just texting. He literally texted me on the drive over here. Literally texted. This is uncomfortable. Um, okay. Come on, one more. <laughs> yeah, Chris, bro. Dude, he's probably just like laying down. Um, bro, he texted me 20 minutes keep, ago. Keep all this in. 20 minutes um, ago. Uh, this is the one you're going to keep in? Okay, fair, 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 fair. Well, I mean, the other shit's demonetized. That was pretty funny. Okay, so what are your thoughts on Rumble landing? We'll call back. <laughs> So what are your thoughts on Rumble landing the Kai and Speed show? Do you think that was like a big move for Rumble or no? <laughs> you're, you're, you're a sneaky guy, you see, bro. I know. What, say what you think. Just, just say what you think. You want me to say what I think? Say what you think, yeah, because I know I think, what you're asking about. <laughs> Hold on. I have no idea what they're talking about. I, I want to I wanna be Dave Skylark. Um, have you seen that movie? No, no, no. Okay, well, you got to see it. Um, he's just yeah. like a shitty interviewer. Um, so, <laughs> one second. So I think Rumble basically, I think, okay, so I think Kai and Speed are obviously like the biggest streamers ever. Like no one will ever yeah that's true disagree with that but i think rumble is ba they paid for like what a show i mean now if they got them streaming on the platform that'd be different but obviously kai and speed aren't going to stream on rumble right so i think rumble was just like competing with kick and they just wanted to like lock something down and and i don't really think it was that great of a decision for the platform but what do you think i'm glad that they're on oh, so they got a show from kai and speed i mean that's probably a step in the pot in the right direction for them it'll probably draw attention so i guess it's good yeah, they're bringing the, a lot oh, of the youth man. on there because like besides me there's not that many there's white scum that's on there uh jiddy on left steve will do it left so i'm glad that they're there i want them to stream more you know i think it's streamed like six times I would have they streamed six times it's like it's like five or six it's like okay. five or six i think i can remember all of them too there was like a, a speed dating show there was japan there was a, a cabin and then power slap that's okay cool. okay so you just want them you wish they were on the platform more yeah well, i wish they could show how dope this platform is and you know, they could bring the youth on there more. But if I if I got to do it. The youth on there? <laughs> what are you, grooming them? All, then I'll do it all. Don't you think like Kai and Speed's style of content, it's like kind of just like, it doesn't really need to be on Rumble? Like, don't you think they make content that's like for Twitch or YouTube? Like, I feel like your content needs to be on Rumble because like we said, <laughs> right? But I don't think their content. No, Rumble just got a lot of advertisers too. There, there's certain advertisers that just don't need to fit a certain ideology. You think that all my content is not but advertising? Are a lot of well, what, what Jigsy is saying is that like you're, they're not too provocative. They can actually exist on the platform. So they stay on Rumble. I mean, so they stay on Twitch because they're actually advertiser palatable. That's what he's saying. Your content needs to be there because you can't go anywhere else because you're a fucking brand risk. Rumbles, it's just certain. Are a lot of Rumble's advertisers political advertisers? No, a lot of them aren't. They just oh. got a whole new list of advertisers. There like, go. Um, I see them pop up all the time. It's like a bunch of medical stuff. and Yeah, we just saw an eye, an eyeglasses, the, that sponsorship. Pretty pretty W, guys. You know, weight loss. You know, regular internet. Um, coffee. Bucked up. <laughs> Bucked up is an energy drink. <laughs> Bucked up, I just see it on the TikTok shop all the time. Um, Bucked up is a, is a good energy drink, bro. I actually see on this motherfucker, dude. Well, you don't like coffee? You don't like 1775 I, I fucking, coffee? I love coffee. Um, oh, yeah. That doesn't sound very political at all. 1775 coffee. <laughs> interesting, man. No, this is, I'm actually having fun talking to you, bro. Um, <laughs> what, what, <laughs> this is a great question. <laughs> what content creator would you say you dislike the most? That's a good question. Who, oh, first, let me ask, I keep flipping around. You want me to ask you? Or you want me, you want me to answer? Yeah, who do you just like? Jack Doherty. All right, now you. Oh, that's a good one. That, was it Jack or Jake? That guy's a fucking loser. Wow, I didn't think you were actually going to say it. Oh, Jack Doherty. 
Yeah, that guy's a loser. That fucking that's the kid that like is constantly harassing people and then uses his bodyguards to like beat people up for him. He's a little fucking loser. Yeah, no, because um, you know, I don't disagree with you, but I just don't like giving a lot of these people more attention. Than yeah, I'll probably just, just by saying their names. Like, well, he I, he came in his pants as soon as I said his name. He like nutted. He's gonna put it on Twitter. Yeah, and then he's gonna go after you. So you just gave him a bunch of content. That's like a whole stream right there. Yeah. I mean, there's a level of truth to that, sure. So maybe I'll just say um, we already well, said it. Well, we can't we can't edit this whole podcast now. Yeah, yeah. This whole podcast is like just keep it, just keep it. Okay. Um, but yeah, that kid's a fucking dork. Yeah. Uh, I mean, like he's like yeah, I see what you're saying. Here's my McLaren. Like, I, I, dude, I want to like, um, <laughs> they kind of look like him. <laughs> that's the funny I mean, thing. Okay, but um, who would you say, what content creator do you dislike the most? What content creator do I dislike the most? Um, this is big Hassan. Oh, bro, fuck, man. See, whoever I say, then there's going to be like a whole beef. Yeah, I, mean, I don't think, he, I don't think you, he's doing good things. You could agree with me. I mean, that's a great answer, I think. I don't think he's doing good things. Have you met Jack in person? Yeah, I have. By proxy of like Neon Cliff Farming? Yeah. Okay. And I have that guy. At Neon Cliff Farming, he was, you know, he was there. One time I was at a Vulture's con, like, uh, Ye was having an event, and then he came in with a fake Ye and a fake Drake. And like he tried to get in, and like I was like, bro, like I don't want Ye's event to be like Jack Doherty, you know? So yeah, yeah he was trying to get in. There was this, they thought that I like snitched on him. I'm uh, basically like the security guy was, was about to let them in. I'm like, that's that's fake. Okay. Like, like this is fake. So yeah, about the Ye stuff. Oh, so you did snitch on him. Okay. Um, weren't you like yapping about how he was gonna be on a stream or something? Yapping about that? <laughs> or did it actually happen? Well, I mean, yeah, I, I used to work with him and like still kind of, you know, it's, it's a little bit complicated. But yeah, I would like to have him on stream. I think it'd be a, a really good Kanye West? Yeah, I used, I used to work on his political campaign work <laughs> when he was going around talking about how much he loved hitler like yeah that was definitely some work you got going on there much that's one hell of a political campaign on like the phone or text how'd you talk to him i was there i was working on the campaign yay your depression isn't real you're bipolar it's not real all right it's all government psyops dude and i went out to la for about a couple weeks and we were working on yay 24 when he was running for president in, 20, in 2022 under 2022 so you were you spoke to kanye west in person multiple times yes and yeah. i was working on what was that like it was a lot of brainstorming sessions. It was trying to, to figure out how, like the right way to move the country forward. <laughs> okay. Like we had Bible study and wow. you know, coming up with policy. It was good. It, it, I thought you were Muslim. What happened? It was it was really interesting time, and it was I think it changed the discussion that's happening politically right now quite a bit, even though the campaign didn't come to fruition. No, I don't think it really changed anything. I think people just really that was when people really realized that like Kanye is going through a lot and he's struggling and he's out of his fucking mind. Like it didn't make, and it didn't really change anybody's opinion on anything. Just to be clear, <laughs> you had no impact in any positive capacity. Yeah. Why did he not end up running? Did he just not care anymore? Or because he was, he had a fucking mental breakdown. I was talking about Hitler being a cool guy. There's a lot of reasons. Um, like, that's something like difficulties with the paperwork, especially because he was, um, he was running in 2020. Like, yeah. They say that you can't file a couple of times. It's just like complicated campaign, blah, blah, blah. But wow. yeah, it was good. My le I want to, I want to answer my least favorite content creator, but who, who's my least favorite content creator? Who do you think? I mean, you already talked negatively about like Hassan and Pokemon, so they're obviously not going to get any cloud off of you saying anything. Yeah, see, the people that I'm thinking of, like, I don't want to say it because I'm just going to give them more attention than they're going to have more. Yeah, I don't, uh, I don't think that matters. I think, I mean, dude, Jack Doherty's gotten <laughs> enough. I mean, people have made up their mind about him. You know what I'm saying? Like, right, right, right. You can give Jack Doherty a uh, 20 million uh, view TikTok. No one's pulling up to that stream. Yeah. Um. So, like, besides like view bots, right? But um, oh yeah, he converted to Christianity briefly when he was working with him. Yeah, true. Yeah, yeah. Who's your favorite content creator? Let's get wholesome. My favorite content creator. Good. It's, it's been a, like, I'm all, oh, it's you. All on edge, man. Like, I watch your podcast before and it's like smiling and wholesome. Well, and we went like, from case you guys are raising each other and stuff like that. And then I come on and I'm like, man, I got to talk about the vaccine. Uh, my favorite content creator is, I would say me. I'm like, I think I'm my favorite okay. content creator. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Besides you, who's your favorite content creator? Who do I watch the most? Um, I've been watching a lot of rice gum. I like his streams. Is that like a self report? You've been watching rice gum? Wow. Incredible. Yeah, I would say right now my favorite streamer is Rice Gum. Do you think that's just because he's on Rumble? I really like the. Doesn't Rice Gum run like an entire OnlyFans prostitute network, and you're pretending to be Muslim? Like, aren't you supposed to be against that? Rumble, you are. I know. Like, I, I would say this off camera too. He's laughing. Like, I genuinely like. I watch Rumble streamers. My friends are, like Fresh and Fit. I watch. I watch my friends. You know, I, I watch those guys a lot. Okay. Um, if the UI is getting a lot better. I think you just haven't seen it since 2022. Have you? I looked at Rumble's UI like three, four months ago. Probably. Yeah, yeah. It's updated. Do you have the app? Uh, I deleted it. Yeah. So like, if you check out the new app, bro, it's good. Okay. I'll think about it. <laughs> um, okay. So you, you were. How oh, maybe it is moist critical? I don't know. Oh shit! Sorry. We, you know, obviously we had moist critical on last episode. Internet yeah. legend, awesome, right? Now you're here. <laughs> um, <laughs> well, I need to come here. So, so okay, uh, can you walk me through the entire? Well, okay, but okay, why do you say that though? Why, why do you think he's an internet legend and I'm not? So why do I think moist critical? Well, I mean, moist critical has been more consistent than you, and he's more liked than you by most people. He's certainly more honest than you. I think that's why people like him a lot. <laughs> um, but okay. He was an internet legend. Yeah. Great question. He is the embodiment of, if you want to keep in touch with what's going on in the internet, you want it from an unbiased source, you go to Moist Critical. When I'm eating food, when I'm eating tacos, and there's new drama on the internet this week, I'm going to watch Moist Critical every fucking time. It's either that or fucking Keemstar, right? And Moist Critical is the Keemstar that people don't hate. So, so drama farming is what qualifies? Drama it? farming. What do you mean? I don't really think he drama farms. I mean, Sneeko drama farms. This guy, I don't think that... Um... Moist Critical does not drama farm, but okay. That's what you said. So like drama, that's what qualifies a legend?
you can you it's literally impossible to be an unbiased commentator so i mean what are we like it's giving me the uh same vibe as like oh everybody's everybody is uh what is he what do you say fucking everybody does propaganda this is the fucking hassan take what are we doing are we doing an english discussion here i mean yeah everybody's has bias but what i what i mean by this is you're getting like actual research takes is what i mean right yeah as unbiased as possible like that's what he's trying to say are you familiar with like your age you know who that is yeah, he's yeah. Cool like he does the same thing like all, all of his takes are like researched right um so by unbiased you mean research I mean research. Yeah, I mean researched, and you're not. Well, you will usually take research into account when it comes to like a bot. Like, if you don't do research on a take, then you are quite literally only using your perspective of it or your perception of it, and it's becoming biased. <laughs> but if you look at like objective research, then sure, if that's what, what Moist Critical is doing. Like listening to any parties, you're not listening to your chat, you're not listening to your fucking YouTube comments. You're but like, yeah, we, when I've watched him, it's mostly just like, hey, here's what's going on, on Twitch, and I think this is bad because of this. And it's like, okay, cool. You're saying what you actually think, and you don't care what like the result is in a YouTube comment, right? Okay, are you saying that that's what I do? No, I'm not saying that at all. I said, we had Moist Critical, now you're here, right? Yeah. You guys obviously had beef last year. Mm -hmm. So can you, that's, I don't even know how we got into that discourse, but mm -hmm. can you walk me through the entire thing there? Well, yeah, see, I, that's where I disagree. Like the whole beef started because he was calling out my friend Fresh. Saying that he was making fun of uh, Fresh because Fresh was talking about how he was fucking a bunch of girls, even though Fresh is a loser. <laughs> and in on his own podcast gets routinely disrespected because he doesn't contribute oh. at all. And then you insult him, um, his girlfriend. And you like were cry. You were just having a fucking crybaby meltdown about it. So he thoroughly embarrassed you and like fucking destroyed you. That he was a liar, which like that was not research. Like he didn't actually look into why he called him a liar. Um, so I, I mean that's a good example of like you know just not okay. doing research and not looking into what you're saying. And you made fun of a fucking loser that does a red pill podcast that goes on sugar baby websites to get attention. That's so like oh no sorry. Following with the United Trends War, you know it's, it's easy to make fun of the the red pillars when you come from because they're losers. Like the, the I could say like the normie land. It's easy to make fun of like the, the more fringe or niche. Parts of the internet, like uh, that doesn't make any sense. You guys put, talk about red pill as if it's an objective truth about the world. So why would it be fringe and niche unless it's a bunch of fucking um, older men desperately trying to engage in some kind of male victim complex because they're undateable. And the only reason that they get pussy is because they have money. The red pill people and say like, oh, these guys are grifters, like fake alpha males. Like, I get that all the time. They say fake alpha male. I'll never call myself an alpha male. They say that about my friends fresh and fit all the time too. And I think that's because I, I actually think that um, that's what, what the red pill space is. It's critical, for example, I think he goes exactly by what the comment section says. I think he tries to follow what's trendy. I think he tries to follow. What it's a little ironic considering Sneeko quite literally is we talked about it earlier he's completely enthralled by audience capture what the masses are going to say and what they're already going to agree with because and when you unironically use the term normie land like you know that you're fucking terminally online that's what's going to get the most amount of views and it's not going to come from it's not going to change anybody's mind it's not going to like push the conversation forward it's going to say what most people already want to hear because you kind of want to mindlessly listen to something that you already agree with while you're eating food and that's why like he was lying about my friends and that's why i called him out for that and then we, we he was lying about my so friends he was lying about your because my friend said that he got he got he had sex with three women and it was, and my friend is so sexy. I love him. And there's no way. Friends, uh, what did he say exactly? My friend was, was telling a story about like, about the girls that he's been with. And he's like, there's no way. He's just calling him a virgin. Oh, I saw that video. Yeah. yeah. And that was like a perfect example of somebody. You don't think he was just like being funny at all? Like, you don't think he was just like. He's making fun of a red pill loser. Because dude, obviously, what, what's your friend's name? It's like Myron, right? Yeah, Fresh and Myron. Um, Fresh and Myron. Obviously, those guys aren't virgins, right? Obviously. So when he's calling them virgins, you don't think he's just like being funny? I mean, he went into pretty good detail about it, so it, it didn't... It well, he was specifically making fun of them because one of them said that he had sex with, like, th three women in the same day or something. I like he genuinely believed that. And also, like, the, the fake alpha male thing is a thing I don't like, especially when you're, when you're talking about the problems of dating. Uh, right That's now. not what they're doing. They're giving men a literal victim complex. It's just... It just centralizes around hating women and making, like, young men feel like they're victims. Like, it's loser shit. I hate any movement that just, is a, like, promotes a victim complex in anybody. It's just loser shit. It doesn't matter if it's for men, women, black people, white people, Hispanic people, fucking gay, straight... Uh, the victim complex is like loser pathetic um, shit. That's all Fred Pill does. Right now in the West, I think it just blames women for shit. It's important for people to have those discussions. When you try to like, you know, shut <laughs> okay. that to like, oh, these fake alpha, oh, these gurus, I think that's, uh, that's not yeah, good that's for what the they discussion, are. especially when there's all these problems with dating. Interesting. Okay. Um, so then what like jump started the entire beef? It was that. I, I called them out and then. It's interesting that you guys, like, it's so interesting that you guys have like a, such a big problem dating when a lot of people don't. <laughs> like, you guys aren't in stable relationships. Why are you giving advice on dating? I don't really understand that. Why would you get dating advice from somebody who cannot hold down a stable relationship? Like we we had a disagreement about um I thought it, yeah I thought it was about cuties yeah right? we had a disagreement about the movie cuties yeah and what was like the disagreement yeah I also think that was a good example of like not researching the topic at all because like the reason that I, that I was defending the movie cuties obviously there's things in there that's not good and they're kind of gross but I think oh, Sneeko's about to say something objectively false right you ready the director made a mistake she's like a like a young girl and I think she was trying to show her experience growing up as a Muslim and then being indoctrinated by Western culture and by social media and then in the end of the movie uh, the girl ends up coming back to Islam which I think was that's not true. <laughs> Like, this is how you know Sneeko is the dumbest person in the entire world.
It's because what he just said is he criticized Moist Critical for not being factual enough and then talked about cuties. You know, it was good that he criticized the sexualization of those younger girls. But then he talks about how it's a coming of age story where a girl goes from being, um, you know, Islamic to going too far left and then going back to Islam. The end of the movie, she abandons both going too far, too religious and like being too gross, we'll say. So basically, she she rejects going too far left and too far right, and she just becomes a normal person. That is like that's uh, anybody who watches a movie will know that. So he's just dumb. Like he's just he he's uh, hey guys, <laughs> he doesn't have his research takes. By the way, here's an unresearched take on a thing. Like you don't even know what you're talking about. And I know that you're like you're just stupid. Like you're either being dumb or dishonest. Like you're just a it's a weird lie. It's like why why lie about that? Like it's just childish behavior. <laughs> like why? It was an important part of the movie. And I think I had a good moral, but I think it was also diluted by like. That's not what the movie was about. So you're fucking dumb. You no know, scenes that were gross, which were supposed to be gross, but they probably didn't need to be depicted. So I think he could have looked into the intention of the movie more. I think instead. You don't even know the intention of the movie. That was a perfect example of like why I don't like his content is because he'll see internet outrage and they'd be like, oh, I got one. And then just repeat what everybody else is saying because he knows it's going to get views. And because he's like, yeah, you said the thing we agree with. And then like everybody, like the mindless people will, will clap and agree. Interesting. Okay. Yeah, if he had watched the, the, the movie, then he could have pushed back on you and be like, no, you're wrong. That's not what it's about. You're stupid. Yeah, that's. Interesting. Don't you think if he didn't he, even in that in that video, he said he didn't watch the movie. How are you going to review a movie that you haven't seen? I mean, you watched it and you still got it wrong. So I don't think that's what he said. I think he, no, he did say that. In the no, video. I think he said he stopped watching the movie because so he didn't watch the movie. No, he said he stopped watching the movie because yeah. it was sexualizing. Yeah, I don't think we can say that on YouTube. But yeah. yeah, I think that's why he stopped watching the movie. Right. Is that what he said? Yeah, I know. But then you shouldn't give a movie review about something a movie you haven't seen. But I think that you probably shouldn't give movie reviews at all because you don't even know what you watched. What's his problem with it? I don't think it, the plot. And like you said, the plot is cool. Right. The plot is like very like, you know, uplifting but his problem was that they used young actresses because can a yeah that's bad that's can a kid bad. really consent to anything no, no, a bad. kid really can't consent if i i don't i don't think an 11 year old kid should be in a movie in, in like in that nature right no, no like absolutely not so you would agree with him but that's, that. my, that's my problem is like the drama youtubers will just follow what everyone's outraged but they're not seeing what the intention was they're but, not seeing what the real what the truth is but if every, but you don't know what the message of the movie is so. everyone's outraged by it don't you think it's probably correct if everyone is out Outrage by everybody's not necessarily, but outrage about the fact about how important the team was. What I understand people that are upset by the movie uh, cuties because it's like an uncomfortable watch because there are some sexualized scenes. Um, but the overall narrative of the movie is like it sets the stage to make sure you understand that what's happening is wrong and bad and distressing to her. Um, and so, like, I understand you being uncomfortable. I think if you have to turn the movie off because you couldn't sit through, like, the limited scenes because there weren't that many scenes that did that. If you couldn't sit through the limited scenes that did that, I honestly think that you're just kind of immature. Um, I don't know. Like, that's, in my opinion, that's more of a self-report. Like, I didn't get my fucking penis. didn't get hard watching the movie. It was just like, oh, this is kind of uncomfortable and gross. And then the movie, the, most of the scenes aren't these overly provocative sexual scenes with these, like, these young people. So like if you couldn't sit through it without getting upset, like I think that you're just kind of immature um, or that's a self-report for yourself, you know, criticize the movie if you want, but it's like, you, you know, you should be able to sit through it and watch the whole movie to be able to give your take on it. It's not like that detrimental to your fucking to anything. Um, but yeah, like whatever, man. Everybody was outraged about January 6th and then look what happened. You can't follow public outrage immediately because actually, well, you know, okay, I don't care. Public outrage is wrong. What am I going to keep saying? Like, obviously he's wrong about January 6th. He just, he just, he's fucking dumb as shit a lot of the time especially recently i'm not saying to follow public outrage that's not what i'm saying if there is you know 10 million people and 9.5 million people watch this movie right or whatever and they think wow i don't think they should have used younger actresses for that mm. do you think they're right that's not the that's yeah of course they're, they're right about that but i think that when you are covering something or doing a review on something you should be able to look at it and actually you should watch the movie before reviewing it i okay. think that's that simple got it so um so you agree with him in the sense that they shouldn't have used young actresses. Hundred percent, yeah. Okay, and that, that was his main take, which was a valid take. Um, you wish he watched the full movie, but he yeah. said he couldn't because it was using young actresses, which is a fair point. Fair. So then we progress into, let's talk about my clips. <laughs> let's talk about my clips. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what was going through your head that night? So I, I was just streaming, and I was like, I was going over the fact that like everybody that dislikes me, they have a certain archetype. They all look, kind of look the same. There's, there's a lot of like, you know, pasty people don't look like. I, I'm not trying to be insulting, genuinely. Um, it's a lot of pasty people that have long hair and they they look like they sit inside all day. Define. <laughs> okay pasty like really pale like they look pale. like they see the sun like just like it, it, it's the same look of the person every single time uh, i used to call yeah it's funny because he has this whole list of people that disagree with him and it's usually a bunch of like uh white like um like i guess pale looking people but he never adds people like abin preach to the list of people that disagree with him because he knows that it makes him look fucking stupid. The soy boy collage, which I thought was funny because like there's a list of everybody that's made documentaries about me or that's made like hate videos on me. And they almost they look identical. Um, and so I was calling that out and then he was streaming at the same time. He's like, yeah, me like watch these clips, watch these clips. I thought this was funny. Like, oh, watch my clips. You know, and he's like, oh, it's mags, not clips. But everybody from New York, everybody says clips. OK, it's like you emptied a clip. So do you think you unload the clips? The clip. Yeah. Um, uh, OK. 
I don't I don't do that fortunately. Do you think you won this dispute? I think No, we got fucking blasted. That would have been different if I was on YouTube. If I if No, it wouldn't have been. You would have gotten thoroughly embarrassed regardless. If I had a YouTube channel, this is a good example of like being silenced. If I was on the same platform, it's like bro, you can't you can't win a beef on a platform that you're not on. You were going you you were going to lose regardless. Like you embarrassed yourself thoroughly. It had nothing to do with your ability to be on the platform. That's a, that's a stupid it's, it's like showing up to a fight and you're not there. Wow. You're going to lose got that it. fight. Okay. Um okay. So you you lost. If it's it's an unfair fight, bro. Okay. It's an unfair um, fight. All right, cool. Well, yeah. So, who do you think is going to win the <laughs> Who do you think is going to win the 2024 Jinxie. election? Um <laughs> I mean that's a tough call, man. You don't really know. It's not. A, we'd have two un. I mean, we'd have two people who are kind of unfit to be president running. Basically, Biden and Trump, rough. You know, but great transition. Um, you're funny, bro. Uh, Thank you, man. I think it's gonna be. <laughs> yeah, we would have to believe everything. No, no, no. Keep it all. Keep it all. Keep it all. I think. I think Trump. I think, Trump's think Trump's gonna win. I really hope he does. I hope he does. Yeah. So if you would choose between Trump or Biden, you would vote for Trump, right? Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah. Okay. What um, about you? So for me, I would, if I had to choose between Trump or Biden, I would choose Trump. But I wish um, the Florida governor, Ron DeSantis, was winning in polls. Because here's the, not the... <laughs> Ron DeSantis? There's no way you think Ron DeSantis would make a good president. That's fucking insane. Problem I have with Trump. The problem I have with four years of Trump, right? First off, it's only going to be four years, right? Second, if Trump uh, gets into office, what's going to happen immediately? Drama. Constant news. Constant bullshit. Yeah, of course. Constant arguments. It's going to polarize the nation yet again. We're going to be more divided yet again. Right? Okay. But if Ron DeSantis gets in, uh, do you know Ron DeSantis at all? Yeah, of course. He's a fucking loser. His policies are complete dog shit. Like, he's got nothing. He ran on nothing but, like, LGBTQ hate. He's got, like, really nothing else. And then he got embarrassed by Trump. <laughs> That's all he ran on. He doesn't have any other policy conversation to have. You do? Yeah, the governor, yeah. Yeah, Florida governor. Um, You don't know Ron DeSantis? Yes, of course. Okay, okay, okay. What the f bro, the guy with the platform shoes who, like, who sells yeah. out to Israel flies there, like, three so, yeah. times a year. What, like, the, what, what, you think I don't know Ron DeSantis? Well, because you were, like, the governor guy. But, yeah, no, so if Ron DeSantis got in, people the would The lizard guy, yes, everyone knows Ron DeSantis, yeah. Okay, so, okay, if Ron DeSantis got into office, there, there wouldn't be the bullshit, right? The, pro the problem I have with another four years of that would just be four more years of bullshit. But if I had to choose between Trump and Biden... I mean, I, I don't know why you wouldn't say, like, Vivek or whatever, Ram Swamy. Like, I feel like that was probably a better runner-up to Trump. I'm not a huge fan of the guy, but at least he was intelligent and charismatic. Fucking Ron DeSantis, he looks like soggy milk. I would choose Trump, but wouldn't you agree that if Trump gets back into office, it's just going to be more bullshit yet again? It'll be entertaining. There'll be TikTok clips. He'll probably clip farm a little bit, but it'll be four years of bullshit. Yeah, right? it's bullshit if you look from the content creator perspective and if you're chronically online. But if you actually look like geopolitically, <laughs> like Trump, he no. If you look at it politically, Trump was a failure. The only thing that he really did was cut taxes, which we couldn't ever pay for. He inflated the annual federal deficit by four hundred billion dollars before COVID even started. There was no long term like plan for that. He never overcare uh, overturned Obamacare because he simply couldn't. He couldn't replace that. He didn't really do anything, um, and he was incredibly divisive, so he couldn't work with both sides and get shit done. Like, there's definitely things to criticize about Biden. I mean, he could barely fucking talk and walk, and I think that it, like, the border is a disaster right now. But I mean, as policy was like, he's definitely better than fucking Trump. I mean, what did Trump do? He just kicked down like all the Middle Eastern problems up like down the road. Uh, Biden had to deal with them. I think he's doing decently when it comes to the response in Ukraine, decently when it comes to the response in Israel, um, in the Middle East. You know. Like overall, he passed a massive infrastructure bill, bipartisan infrastructure bill. I mean, he's getting more done than Trump ever could. I wish it was somebody better. <laughs> like what? You, compared to Trump, I mean, anybody's better. Any other conservative, I'd be like, oh, okay, give me the Chris Christie. I don't give a fuck. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> it's not because he's a Republican. He's just an idiot. New war started when Trump was in office. Like we were. Oh my God! No new war started. We he literally exacerbated tensions in the Middle East. <laughs> <laughs> what are you talking about? It was one of the most peaceful times geopolitically. And I, I want to go back to that. I think like, yeah, if you look at the headlines all the time, like that he was constantly antagonizing Palestine and Iran. What are you talking about? Be like crazy, crazy. But what's more important is world peace. And Joe Biden all he did was contribute more to wars and give billions of dollars to Ukraine is giving more money to Israel. I want that to stop. I think it's I like how they censored Israel. No, I don't want it to stop. Continue to support Israel and Ukraine. Push for peaceful solutions, of course, but dope as fuck that Trump met Kim Jong-un. I think that's fucking sick. He did a great it job. It was cringe. Uh, like, people don't give him credit for that enough. Like people focus on like orange hair. Because he didn't do anything. He's like, I'm gonna stop these problems. And he did nothing when it came to North Korea. Or like orange man bad or we'll talk about the headlines or how something <laughs> provocatively but he did a good job um with he, didn't do good with anything. Yeah, putin too right yeah, yeah right. bro yeah how many other presidents were able to do all that like uh, putin clearly doesn't respect biden kim jong-un clearly doesn't respect biden but how many other presidents would be able to do that any president that wanted to do those things would do them trump was able to, to shake hands with a lot of countries that other presidents didn't go to has um, any president ever okay. met with a north korean no he's the first yeah yeah because the north korea is a fucking pathetic loser and what are you talking about kim jong is a loser there's no reason to even respect his existence because they're a non-threat that's yeah. fucking sweet and after they're like they're they're like a fucking poodle 
on a leash of China. All like in, oh, during the Obama years, everybody was afraid that North Korea was going to nuke us. That, that was a huge yeah. thing. Nobody was afraid of that. Nobody even no, nobody even thought that a nuke from North Korea could even get close to America. What are you talking about? Forward. So where do you align like politically? Like, would you say you're Republican or Democrat? I wouldn't say either one of those. I think that's stupid. Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. I have conservative values 100, but I wouldn't say I'm Republican or Democrat. Uh, that's, those are both of the same. Yeah. yeah so. Um. What do you? Yeah, I'm like independent. Okay. But I mean, I just kind of play it by ear every year. Yeah. But um. Would you say that, like, I mean, have you ever seen, like, I think it was one of George Washington's quotes where he said, um, like, having a Republican Party and the Democratic Party is, like, the worst thing for America. He said something along those lines of, it's just going to divide the nation, right? Yeah, yeah, you're better off with, like, a third party to keep everything in check that was actually kind of competitive with the other parties. That's, well, that's what it's designed to do. Yeah. So, um, what are your thoughts on if there were just no political parties, right? Like, if they just, like, what would life be like then? That's much better. I yeah. don't know. There's no reason. I mean, things would still organize themselves. I think we're better off doing some kind of, like, a, a structure where there's multiple political parties on the ballot that are actually competitive with each other, like, at least three to five, and then do some kind of, like, ranked choice voting instead of just, like, voting for your the person you want to win. You know, so it's like, oh, this is my first pick to like, let's say there's five people. This is my first pick. This is my second, third, fourth and fifth. And let's say like there's uh, overall the se- everybody had like the same second pick kind of like that would be the person that would win. Right. It's like everybody's second. It's like more of a compromise. Something like that would be something like that would be much better. Nobody can give me a valid reason. Like, why do you need to fit into one of two parties? It's stupid. Just like have people run for president. And then if people can vote for them. Yeah, I think I politics agree. is like parent parent thing. Like, oh, my parents are Republican. I'm Republican. My mom's Democratic. I'm Democratic. Like, yeah, they, they use it like an identity. It's really stupid. And like, then they like when they get the ballot, it's just R, R, R or D, D, All the way down, D. Yeah. It's like um, I think it is pretty stupid. Yeah. yeah, they just they believe in whatever news that they see. And then they think that the other side's bad. It's very yeah. it's very stupid. Uh, That's what you do. OK, what are your thoughts on Aiden? <laughs> yeah, he, he's, a, he's a good guy. That's it. He, he's uh, so like. <laughs> Yeah, you know, I think like recently, like kind of had a falling out, I guess. Um, Who? So, with me and Aiden, I guess. Yeah. Oh, you did? Yeah, he always says he doesn't want to collab anymore. And I don't really know why, but I mean, I can give you reasons, but I mean, it's already demonetized. I think we have like... Yeah, we're demonetized. Yeah, so it's fine. Like, I think um, he... I, I don't really understand his reasoning. Um, I think that there's a lot of multitude of reasons. In my opinion, if you want me to be honest, I think... Um, I think like people like his management or something is like they're telling him like you should distance yourself from Sneeko. Well, probably because you're a brand risk, maybe. I think that's what it's funny because Aiden is a massive brand risk. It is. Um, I think it's like he's starting to level up now. He's like, I mean, he says brand risk, but he's not really anymore. And he's, he's starting to get like bigger collapse. He's getting to the next level. And I think he's having conversations. Okay, you're making more money. You know, you're the face of this website. Like, uh, here's what you should be doing. He's very like, you know, he's playing chess with everything. So it's like, why be friends with Sneeko if he's, you know, if he's being a, if he's a brand risk? Ironically, <laughs> but that's the name of his thing. So it's like, so it is too bad because I, I genuinely like the guy and I consider him a friend. But it makes you know, if it doesn't make sense content wise, then you know. I mean, then don't do it. So do you, um, like, do you disagree with him leveling up and getting on, like, collabs and shit if it's, like, like, what is what is your point? What do you mean? I, I just wish, it was the same thing, like, when I was banned. I wish that they could be honest about it. It's like, okay, this doesn't make sense. Like, I, I wish that we could have a, I've, I've had that conversation with people before. I'm like, man, I have to have, I have to level I mean, do you think he could trust you to, like, keep that to yourself in private? Well, up right now, and, you know, I like you, but I can't do it. You know, yeah. like, we've had that conversation. I was able to cut it off. Um, and, the, and they understand that. I wish it was the same. Or, you know, if it's not that reason, I, I wish it could just be it could be straight up. But, like, that's what it is, man. I don't know, like, how much you've seen of the industry, um, but this is so the industry's been... Um, Fuck. A lot of people come and go. Like, people that I thought were my friends aren't, you know. So you, you can't really... You, you I mean, you can't, you can't say three of your friends under the bus, so... You can't really go in and expect to... You, At least with Destiny, you did. <laughs> you can't ask for validation or, like, expect that anyone's going to be loyalness. You, you have to have your friends, like, your real people. Like, if, if you ever question if a friendship is real, then it's Damn, not. I so, fucked you know, up. Yeah, it is. Yeah, no, um, okay, so... Cause you guys did like, didn't you guys do like kicking it or something or whatever it was? Yeah, I think. Yeah, I guess we, we had like a we, we yeah we did a lot of collabs. Yeah, but I mean, but like aside from that, right? Like, what do you think of just his like streaming? Career? Well, his streaming's good, man. Yeah, I think he's an entertaining guy. I'm yeah. sure you watch a lot of stuff too. Like, he, he's, oh, he's a good content creator. Bro, I mean, he to be honest, bro, Aiden is the one who made streaming mainstream because before Aiden, it was just like, oh, you have to blow up on like Fortnite. But like, he was like the first ever like just full camera like big just chatting streamer. If you remember that, like a lot of streaming was just have a game on and then you're playing. We did a lot of collabs with like rappers, right? In the bottom left, or like have a video on you're in the bottom left. But like, he is the first streamer to like turn it into something different, where like you can have like guests on and have like a fucking rapper on. Like he did like completely change streaming like forever. Yeah. He, he's the one who made streaming mainstream. But I mean, you're saying like you guys, I mean, you're talking about from like a personal point of view, right? Like your personal connection with him. Yeah. But I just meant like from like stream. Oh, from content yeah, everybody yeah. knows that he's like a like the Kanye of Twitch. Yeah. Okay. Sonny, did a great job and he, uh, wish all the best success, man. Yeah. How long everybody streaming? Like everybody doing it, man. I hope everybody really succeeds. Like there's, there's so many opportunities right now to, to blow up, man. Yeah. How long do you see yourself streaming for or making content for? I think another, like, I was just talking about this in the car, like, probably like two, three years streaming regularly, and then I kind of want to dial it back. I want to dial it back. It's, it's really, it's a lot. It's a lot of work. People, people underestimate that. And I, I can see myself doing that, and then I'll probably transition to something else. Like maybe. There you go. Streaming is a lot of work, guys. We got that. We're getting closer to Hassan every day. Maybe a podcast or like maybe stream less. I'll probably still always keep in touch with my community, but I've always wanted to make films. That's why I got into this in the first place. That's what I was doing on YouTube. I want to do short films, and I think that that's what I, I want to transition to once I can start my own media company. That's always been my goal. Okay. Uh, How long do you want to do streaming for? I don't know until um until I'm just bored of it I guess until I don't care about it anymore because like you said the biggest part about streaming is it's not it's not like a it's not like a job where you're like getting your hands dirty the biggest the, the biggest issue not issue but like the biggest task with streaming is just constantly being creative thinking of new shit
I told you, it's the same thing. It's getting obviously money and for attention because like he was doing fine before he decided to grift uh, into the Andrew Tate sphere, and uh, then he changes his entire like platform for money. To the truth, and then also you know, having like good conversation with different people, being able to travel the world, uh, the access that you get from it, and learning like, content's so dope. Like because you get to you get to interact with like people that you would never be able to interact with regardless. You get to meet really interesting people. You get to do whatever you want to do. It's, it's whatever you make it. So I, I just love the, how open it is. You can really do whatever you want to do with content, especially streaming. The opportunities are there's so many new opportunities every day. Yeah. Okay. Um, have you ever played like video games before? Yeah, I, I started on Call of Duty. Really? Yeah, yeah. I was gaming. I, I did Minecraft back in the day, and. I played, I played some FIFA, but I was like, my main thing, I started YouTube, I was playing Call of Duty Black Ops 2 for, for years. I was never that good. I was, I'm, not like, I'm not like your level, but I, I just like doing the comedy. I like to yap. I would like to play yeah. yap at the same time. I was always a yapper. So, but yeah, that's how I first started. Man. I, I still miss Call of Duty. I like first-person shooters a lot. Well, I think he talks about how like video games are immature, even though he's incredibly immature and his like, entire structure is about how women are bad. Um, but like, yeah, that's why I think um, Jinx, he was pushing him on that before. It's like, you said video games were bad because <laughs> he's weird. Like most, like a lot of adults play video games. It's not a big deal. Okay. All right. I'm not going to play more that much, but yeah, I don't really play it all. I didn't know that. Um, do you have any like, questions for me or no? Question for you? Uh, no, I asked you quite a bit. Yeah. I mean, okay. yeah. Thank God. All right, Batman. That was pretty over an hour. It's pretty good combo, dude. Yeah, yeah. thanks for having right. me. Yeah, bro. Um, now we'll see how long it takes to get this monetized. We're gonna have to like, cut out everything. Probably. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. But thank you, man. Thank you for coming. Of course, man. Appreciate, Appreciate you. you. Yeah. Cool beans, um, man. Uh, how much do we have to cut this? All right, great. All right, cool. Good video. I gotta go.